Abbott. Okie dokie. Today it was revealed that despite the fact that everyone who sat A-levels got an A, which is why they call them A-levels, companies in Britain are being forced to teach school leavers how to speak, write and add up. Half of employers say school leavers are completely unable to function in the workplace, claiming they can't make simple calculations in their head, speak in an articulate manner or read simple instructions. They're computer literate, of course. They can download porn faster than Jordan can unhook a bra and can took 50 words a min. But I can't talk proper no nothing. This after ten years of education, education, education. Spelled E-D-J-A-K-A-S-H-U-N. The Confederation of British Industry stated the bleeding obvious and said it's hard to make the best of your life chances without the ability to read or write. School leavers don't get that. Why would they need to read if for a career they're just going to be famous, innit? The CBI said that students need to be excited by the fantastic opportunities now available in the world of work. They're right. Like the opportunity to get up at 6.30 in the morning, slog into work on the tube with a sweat running down your back and your face pressed into somebody's armpit. The opportunity to work eight hours a day doing something you don't like for someone you hate. To have half your wages taken in tax so you can barely afford the minute place you call home which you return to each evening exhausted. To watch Jamie Oliver cook up something fabulous in his garden stove while you eat a pot noodle straight from the plastic cup and contemplate your fantastic opportunities. Never mind the three R's. You want to tone up your own R's and get yourself a premiership footballer. Isn't that right, Carol? Yeah. Hello, boys. Start starting on another up there. <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs> well, I did it. I, you know, I did it, I hopefully, it. to, um... What? Hello. Is there an incident? No, there's a little problem with there's, the headphones. There's a slight headphone a moment. Minor technical problem. <laughs> Hello, my name's Nick. I am not Clive Bull. Oh, oh. And you are? I'm Ladies first. Ladies first, as always. I'm Georgia. 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 And I'm not Bob. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell God. that straight off. <laughs> Where is Bob, Very by the way? Is there a I single don't know. person I think that's he's supposed? Left. Yeah, is there a single person that's supposed to be here that's actually shown up for work lately? I haven't. I actually. I haven't seen Bob for. Um, I don't know. Weeks. It's like the Mary mm. Celeste round here. And he was bunking off loads before even his holiday because really? he. Yeah, he had something wrong with his ear. ear. So he was. Oh, just, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've tried that it, one before. Taking yeah. it off, and now he just doesn't come in. Something wrong with this ear or that ear? <laughs> or alternate, uh, depending on what day it is. I think. Anyway, my name's Nick, and I'm a Leo. Your name is Georgia, and you're a... Pisces. Pisces. My name's Alex, and I'm a Leo. Oh, really? Oh, oh no. well, it'll never work, then. No. You're and gonna... my birthday's next to yours. Is it? I think so, yes. Oh, really? <laughs> what, this coming week? Yes. I mean, this week right here? Yes, sir. Uh, is it tomorrow? Yes, sir. Oh. Your birthday's tomorrow? Are you yeah. gonna be working? No. Wait a minute, what? you're working till midnight, though. Which means, oh, an hour which of means we'll have you an hour, we'll have an hour of birthday with you. You're yeah. not working on your birthday. No. Well, how did you work that out? Because it's my birthday. Oh please! I'm working on. I'm doing two shows on my birthday, seven hours a day. I'm working on my birthday, darling. What are you going to do instead, though? Um, probably sit around, polish the chrome on his giant road-going boat. boat. Exactly. <laughs> Eat cake. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather be in here having a jolly old time with me? <laughs> um. <Yeah. laughs> I'll be all coming just just for the hell of it. Just that. for yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean, you're going to listen anyway, right? You'll be tuned in for all three hours. That's I'm true. certain. Yeah. yeah. Making notes. Glued. I yeah. will be. Making sure that it's much worse without you. <laughs> Where's I bet, Clive? I bet Lucy does that. <laughs> but she sits at home going, mm, no. Mm. Yeah, she'll she'll partition the show into quarter hour segments. And then mark each segment out of ten, and compare it with the one that she worked on the previous week, and then plot them on a uh, on a graph. And then there'll be a Venn diagram. You remember Venn diagrams, don't you? And uh, A, the circle A, will be um, her successful uh, parts. Uh, B, an inter an intersecting circle will be the successful parts that I have with whoever else is on, not her. And the uh, and the bit in the middle, the shaded area in the middle, that'll be me. The things that are successful down to me. 
just a minute, microscopic part in the middle. You remember Venn diagrams, don't you? No! Anyone? I, I remember pie charts. Venn diagrams, like intersecting it's... circles, that was the only thing oh, I could yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I like those. Sort of circular. Yeah. yeah. Crossing no, over. I remember those, yeah. They do it in the Observer magazine for brain, like, like someone's brain as well. Like Charles Saatchi's brain and... Anyway, <laughs> what? Just, yeah, just <laughs> the Observer magazine. Morning. Oh, that must be a great read. <laughs> Are you kidding? They have their moments. <laughs> I, I very much doubt it. <laughs> I'm I'm drifting into a coma just thinking about it. The Observer magazine. Oh, blimey! What uh, what muesli you should be eating this week? And uh, all the latest sandals, that sort of thing. <laughs> Knitting your own clothes. Turning yeah. your own how to How to into... knit your own uh, Heathrow protest. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the protest? I saw one of them, and um, the, the protesters were coming at the riot police. They are all in their riot gear, their helmets and the, the big shields and that. Yeah. And, and so they were all lined up, and then the protesters were going at them, and, and they had a shot from the police side, and someone was holding a massive picture of an old lady. Well, the police were? No, the, pro oh, the protesters. the protesters were. They were holding a massive picture of an old lady. Yeah, it was, it was you know, like A1 size of just an old lady's face. Did it look like Carol? That was unnecessarily <laughs> nasty. <laughs> <laughs> without Why? makeup on. Well, was there, any, uh, was there any explanation for that? No, I just saw it on the news and, and I thought maybe that that's quite a good tactic. Carol <laughs> looks the same with and without makeup, by the way, because she's so very tanned. She's bran and I don't <laughs> like bran. She is, she's golden. Yeah, she is. She's uh, uh, a golden-haired lovely. <laughs> 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 is that the first time that you've been uh, called a golden-haired lovely, Carol? Yeah. I thought so, yeah. So what I thought uh, I might do is an in-out list. We'll construct a list, what's in, what's out. Because that's just the very thing that, uh, and you're looking really concerned, both of you. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, he's going to do a what? Do you want me to ditch that right now? No, no, I like the idea. No, just, you don't. Um, you're arranging no, your no, facial features into I'm a <laughs> look of ab abject horror. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm attending to your, to your words. <laughs> Is that what you look like when you're attending to my words? Yeah, right, stop that. attending so closely. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that complicated. Uh, so, does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Um, in, out. Okay, in, mosquitoes, apparently. Yes. Which normally see me and scream buffet. Um, and since I've started eating meat, I haven't had one single bite. Do, do, do mosquitoes not like meat eaters? Because I've noticed that since I, I was a vegetarian for about 20 years, and then suddenly I saw the light, and it was, uh, like, uh... It was playing in my mind as soon as the uh, first bit of, um, meat passed my lips. What was it? What was what? The piece of meat. Um, I believe it was ham. Sliced, uh, sliced ham. You know where they get that from, don't you? That's right. Um, but since that... I haven't had a single bite, and when mosquitoes bite me, I come up in a welt the size of a rugby ball. It's huge, have a giant, massive reaction, which I think the mosquitoes must know in their tiny little microscopic brains. They think, right, well, let's not spread our saliva around. We'll do it to the people that I'm really going to screw up. And since uh, I've been uh, on the meat, I'm eating uh, virtually half a cow a day now, making up for lost time. Uh, I'm not one single bite, despite the fact that the newspapers are telling us that there's a plague of mosquitoes. Have you been bit yet? No. D don't, don't mosquitoes like fresh blood or something? Fresh just, meat? Yeah, what, basically. Not my decrepit yeah, old no, flesh, no, you, might, you might just have the same uh, uh, local hoodie gang of mosquitoes in your place, and they've got <laughs> bored of you. Because <laughs> when I, I, I don't, I never, I never get bitten here, but when I went on holiday, they were just, I was covered in them. Right. So they probably thought, hey, he's he's not local. Well, it's a much oh. more serious type of... It's almost complete reverse of uh, youths, because in the countryside, uh, whether it be this or any other countryside, they're much more violent. <laughs> Whereas in London, uh, it's almost like they're... Well, they're probably drunk, aren't they? Weakened. Stone. Yeah. Drunken stone, that's right, yeah. Next time you see a mozzie, ask... <laughs> Want to score some pot? So I was just wondering whether they don't like people who eat meat, because since I've been eating meat... Just let me check. Let me check. I smell like meat. Bacon. It's like, really? Yeah. Mm, 
bacon. What happens when like, do you smell of vegetables if you only eat vegetables? <laughs> I, I just smell, I think. <laughs> I just sniff myself, but... Yeah, a little hot sniffy action at the beginning <laughs> of the programme. Sure, why not? But, um, I do notice that I do smell like meat now. So maybe it puts them off, but you'd think that the smell of meat would uh, get them very excited. Let me just take this call. I bet it's nothing. Hello? Hello. How are you, Nick Abbott? I'm all right, mate. The Greek lion. I've been listening about the mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. I killed a big one last night here in London, Clapham. And I got bitten by one up to now. Apparently, they're, they are more dangerous than they look, you know? Uh, I don't know. I think it's what you drink as well. Do you drink alcohol by any chance? Yeah. Lots well, of it. I think um, people that drink more alcohol tend not to be bitten so much. That's probably because they get drunk out of their heads. Right. Just a little, you know, my my view, of course. Well, I can't say that it's actually made a much difference, because I haven't just started drinking alcohol. I'm a long-time alcohol user. Oh, so from before. Well, maybe they like vegetarians better than, you know, the meat eaters. Yeah, or perhaps Alex is right, and they just uh, would rather go after some fresh meat. Yes, Alex might be right there. He's a wise man. He's been in, on it, obviously, long enough to know a lot of things. Um, <laughs> lovely to hear um, this lady called Georgia. Lovely voice. All right, and, uh, steady, calm down. We'll send you a picture in the post, all right. <laughs> oh, if you no, want. you won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't force all pictures on me, please. <laughs> anyway, take care. All have right. Lovely, have a lovely evening. Thanks a lot, mate. Bye. Take a picture of yourself and um, you can do swapses. Well, just Google Greek lion, Google G-R-E-E-K-I-E-L-I-O-N. I well, definitely won't be doing that anytime soon, but thanks for the suggestion, all right. George, 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 always George. willing to um, take suggestions <laughs> on board and uh, then promptly ignore them. Isn't that right? This is LBC. Abbott. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? I thought I'd do an in-out list. I've had this in mind for um, a little while now, so um, have you got any suggestions to just kick us off and get the ball rolling? And then, at the end of the show, we'll um, make um, a mental arithmetical calculation in my brain, and then we'll come out with the one that is scientifically the best pair of ins and outs. So, so far I've got mosquitoes are in, summer is out. Although, there is a scintilla of hope about that. Every day you read, it's probably the same people that are like, oh yes it is, oh no it isn't. Um... Just the other day, I read that there is going to be a, um, an Indian summer. There's no doubt about it, they said. And then the following day, the very same people said, there's absolutely no chance of us having an Indian summer. Uh, today, this was in the uh, Telegraph, it's been the summer that never was, but Britain finally looks set for a spell of good weather for the... Can you believe it? Have a guess. Hello? Autumn. <laughs> no, the bank holiday. What? The, oh, brilliant. The bank holiday. What? That's right. <laughs> Fine, sunny weather should spread from the west this week, with most of the country benefiting by Friday. Uh, temperatures are due to climb into the low to mid-70s. Well, that's, just, that's not Bit that great, cold. is it? It was freezing cold today. Horrible. I had to wear cashmere. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell she's popped. <laughs> Lucy has been replaced by her, <laughs> even her, posher. her even posher doppelganger. Yeah. Cashmere, not a jumper. What's that, like wool, is it? It's just, like, very special wool. You get that off a donkey, do you? <laughs> I think it's, um, I think it's a goat. Oh, goats. So how many goats were slain to make no, no, a jumper? No, no, I don't think you slay them. I think you mow their tummies. <laughs> Oh, you mow them? <laughs> <laughs> you, whatever you do <laughs> to a with, with a fly mow. <laughs> flip them over and, yeah. You just and turn them on. and just... <laughs> yeah. Uh, temperatures are set to climb into the low to mid-70s, giving millions a taste of summer after months of wet weather. Tourist resorts are gearing up for a good weekend. Is that this coming weekend? I suppose it'd have to be. We're mm. at the end of August already, aren't we? How mm. depressing is that? The end of August, evenings are getting darker. Even if it's going to be nice during the day, it's still going to be cold in the evening. It's autumn. Nuts are falling from trees. The leaves are turning. I can't stand it. Congress. I was going, um, uh, going uh, to work today, minding my own affairs, <laughs> and my hands were freezing, like they were blue. I thought I should have brought my gloves, but there's a certain point before which you look like... Um, a soft southerner if you wear gloves, right? And I think that that's got to be October. 
before that, even if it's snowing, you've got to just jam your hands in your pockets. Yeah, gloves. And, and adopt a casual air. Gloves in August, that's, that's a big no-no. But it was freezing, my hands were actually blue. But then if the temperature dips below 70, then uh, my blood stops circulating around my body. It just packs in. It's the north -e uh, northeasterly, apparently. It's the wind. That's what's making us cold. Yeah, the weather. Well, yeah. <laughs> the wind, though. Specifically the wind. Is, Is it, it the weather? Th it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, some hoteliers are calling what we've just had the worst ever season. Worst season ever. Britain experienced both the wettest June and the wettest July since records began in 1766. Forecasters said the good weather was unlikely to last into early September. And I thought that after we just experienced all of that, some people would say, you know, statistically, it's actually been uh, a very warm and dry summer. I, I, was, I was convinced we were going to get one of those because... Every year they do that, don't they? You think you've just gone through hell, and they say, well, you know what, actually, um, statistics show, probably the same uh, statisticians that the government gets to uh, tell us how great they're doing in whatever given subject we're talking about at the moment. Uh, Jonathan Powell of the Independent Forecasting um, so uh, is Lucy normally People. What? Uh, just a technical just... question. But Jonathan Powell... <laughs> What, do you, do you want to give over the air? <laughs> uh, well, I'm just wondering whether I, whether, because you've got lots of nice people ringing up. Yeah. And I don't know whether Lucy answers them. Yeah. Or whether she just leaves them t to wait for you to answer them. So well, she's saying. normally um, smoking crack around about now, so she's not <laughs> just, really that bothered. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah, right. I'll, I'll, I'll stop worrying then. <laughs> Jonathan Powell of the Independent Forecaster Positive Weather Solutions said, uh, see, that isn't that a, a nice uh, name for a company? Positive Weather Solutions. Positive weather solutions, well, as though they can actually change the weather for you. Isn't that a thing uh, Private Eye are making fun of? Everything's uh, solutions now. Oh, Private Eye's still going, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Every company is, is something solutions now. Yes. It's like just a, a you know, coverall name for... Yeah, the company. post office is uh, your mail solutions. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, he said he was confident September would turn out to be more settled than August. Well, yeah. <laughs> So am I. I'm confident as well, because it couldn't exactly be worse, could it? You'd, you'd have to go to the Arctic Circle. Here is uh, Palmer's Green. Hello, Dawn. Hi, I'm Nick Abbott. I've been um, quite a bit of time with your show. I've been listening to a bit, and I've noticed, um, <clears throat> as a 16-year-old myself, I've noticed that all the time, nearly every show, you're always criticising people of my, my age and saying that we're all sort of... You know what, Dawn? Hang on, let me stop you there. You're not listening, are you? I'm not criticising people of your age. I'm criticising the government for not giving people your age a good education just so that they can tell us um, with um, statistics to back it up how great they're doing. It's not, I know, but, um, it's not your fault, you it's their about, fault. No, when you think about it, a lot of you, I think, I don't know personally, I, I, I don't know what you're thinking, but from the impression I get from you is that you think that all sort of people my age, like chavs, walking the streets and having kids at 14, and you think you're thinking that those are the people that are getting the good A-level results. They're not. The people who are getting the good A-level results are people who, like, can be bothered to study. But the, I think the people... No, it's like, the people who can be bothered to show up. If 97% if of people pass, then it is almost by definition an exam that it's impossible to fail. Well, some people do fail the exam, and I know that... A tiny microscopic some, amount who, who probably work. forgot their pen. I know, but, um... Listen, I think you want to stop being so sensitive, Dawn. I'm not, I'm not having a go. I'm, I'm saying, not having a go at you. I'm having a go at the government. I'm just saying, though, that um, that people. It's not like you just turn up and you expect. To, yeah, like, I know. I used to be. I used to, to be a kid myself. I didn't just. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't born forty-seven. <laughs> but you know, just, I, don't, I know most of you are having a go at the government. But the way it comes across is like. You think that anyone that just turns up to the exam gets an A? Well, but yeah, no, pretty much so. That but that's well. but that's not your fault. That's but their no, but fault. That's not true. That's not true. There is some thought process that, that goes into it. You have to sort of work. For well, yeah, you have to remain awake while you're taking the exam. I yeah, I understand that. Really that. I don't think that's fair that you say that <laughs> because you know you have to be have some sort of intelligence to you know get a grade, a good grade. Right. Maybe it's a bit easier than it was before, yeah. but it's not. It's not so, as easy as you're making it out. Well, you've it's, certainly told me everything. Sure everything I've said so. As far as a null and void, yeah. Hello? Also, I'm sure, what did you do uh, for A-level or something? Well, uh, A-levels a or something? A-level, what did you do for A-levels? I don't know, it might have been different, I don't know. Well, I did my uh, exams in Scotland, they were called hires. It's kind okay. of different, you just took more of them. I did economics, 
uh, history, English, maths, you know, proper subjects instead but of uh, underwater basket weaving and media well studies like they do now. Well, no, I, I'm not doing that. For my A-levels, well, I'm going to my GCSE results on Thursday, but for my A-levels, I hope to do history, English, geography and government and politics and it's not all just media studies or you know theater studies or something like that but no but but the point is that it's that that the proper subjects hardly anybody's doing anymore in in favor of all these joke subjects like uh, i'm doing an a level in relaxing or whatever whatever it might be and the schools are pushing people of your age into doing that because they're easier to pass so that they will get better stats in the pass rates actually dawn it is true to me this is my experience in my school my teachers wanted me to do math i don't i don't particularly like math but my teacher was like oh yeah you should do math they're pushing me to do math like a hard subject they're not pushing me to do some pansy subject, so it's just a subject. <laughs> I think it depends on the, the student's ability as well. If the student's not very good, then they would tell them to do what you call relaxing subjects. Yeah. But if they know that they've got the ability, then I'm sure the teachers, why would the teachers want to... Right, are you, are you seriously <laughs> asking that question? Why would they push you into an easier subject to pass? Because it will make them look good. I know, but then people like people who really... Don't have. I know you you read and stuff, so you would understand. But people who don't really have much of a clue would think, oh yeah, it's just easy subjects. That's why they're getting all A's. But that's not true. But it is true. <laughs> but not all of it's true. I mean, some parts, but not all of it. Well, is listen, true. Dawn, you have to speak in generalities. You can't um, uh, say something and expect that it applies to absolutely everyone. Of course not. I'm not talking about you personally, I'm talking about the general experience. And, this, and what I'm saying is backed up by every single person that ever has any dealing with, uh, with the, the subject. If the Confederation of British Industry is turning around and complaining to the government that they're having to teach people who leave school with a clutch of A pass A levels how to read and write, then you'd have to uh, accept that there's something gone wrong somewhere. Yeah, I know, maybe something has gone wrong, but I don't think you should take it away from people. If someone studied relatively hard, maybe not as hard as you would like them to, but if someone started <laughs> relatively hard and they managed to get a good grade, yeah. I think it's a bit of a letdown when loads of people are saying, oh yeah, Okay, what's a bigger letdown, Dawn, is that someone, uh, uh, someone bright like you who studies really hard and gets, for instance, 99% on uh, your maths exam, you will be given an A, just like somebody who shuffled in with a hangover and can barely remember uh, anything no, that they've ever know, learned. They'll get an A true. too. That's like if someone shuffled, I think you're exaggerating, if someone shuffled in with a hangover... Well, no, I'm not, because when I, when I took an exam, when, when you got a C, what would get me a C when I took exams will get you an A now. So everything I'm saying is right. But I, don't I, take I, it I, so I, personally, I, Dawn, because this is not a very serious show. I mean, the points I'm making aren't, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing to get upset about. I know. It's Calm it's down, dear. It's only a radio I'm show. I'm calm, but it's just that... <laughs> but this is you calm, is it? I'll tell you what, Dawn, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to send you some pills in the post, all right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just think, you know... Take a deep breath. I, I'm, re I'm actually really calm. I am calm. No, I'm you're really not. You're not. Your your brain is boiling. What do you mean my brain is boiling? Well, your what blood is, is boiling. What's that supposed to be? Which will mean? cause your brain to you heat up. You can't even speak. And you, yeah. I know. I do a show. Incredible, exactly. isn't it? So this after ten years of the Labour government. What a disgrace. It's a bit hypocritical. Well, I can't speak. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't speak. Is that your uh, genuine position? What do you, what do you mean? Well, which part of what I just said don't you understand? Oh. <laughs> I shut her up. Woohoo! That's one for me. Oh, I'm sweating in here. They don't have to take it seriously, don't they? She got quite emotional. Oh, blimey, so did I. <laughs> You're waving your jumper around now. Well, You're genuinely I'm, heated. Yeah, I've got all hot another colour. Yeah, it's, it's good for you. No, it isn't. Put some colour in your cheeks. Oh, fortunately I brought my pills with me. <laughs> <laughs> have another near-death experience. Yeah. I'm going to have to start balancing them out now. One uh, pill to calm me down and the other one to uh, bring me back up again. Because if I uh, take too many of either one, then I could either... My, my head might explode right, on, uh, right off my shoulders or I might lapse into a coma. So if I just keep them more or less balanced, I could take a pill every five minutes in order to uh, just, uh, you know, maintain normality. Mm. 
I quite uh, like one that. upper and one downer, and then it's almost as though you haven't taken anything at all. I, I could go for some of those. I can could I, go, uh, can I, I could stop? go for a couple, of, I... couple of hundred of them right now. Can yeah. I just stop both of you? <laughs> just carve you on down one... a bit <laughs> on the pill front. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the pill, Alex. Don't do it, kids. No, yeah. no, it's bad for you. It's um, well, yeah, it's uh, it's the it's the mood swings. I don't have any of those. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Whoo! Any of these people lined up as um, controversial and het up as that nice lady? Uh, Aaron's quite new. He might he might be cross. He sounds young. He oh. sounds like he might have just taken them. S truth. Now, Everything is going extremely well. I'll say. <laughs> that bloke who killed that teacher. I mean, you read stuff in the papers every day which just renders you speechless. They're not going to send him back to Italy because it would breach his human rights. Can anybody explain that to me? On any level? I mean, Italy. What, because he doesn't like good coffee and architecture? It breaches human rights. I'd welcome being sent to Italy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Especially in this In fact, summer. it's breaching my human rights to keep me here. Well, do you know what you have to do, don't you? Get on a plane. <laughs> I was actually... <laughs> what? I was thinking more along the lines of what the bloke did, the bloke that killed the teacher. Oh, well, that's now... That's dark, I know. It's now, a, that was just... That's unnecessary. Good grief. Yeah. I'm being attacked from, uh, emotionally on all levels here, take, Alex. Take a pill. <laughs> Let's have, uh, High Wickham. <laughs> Edwina. Hello, Nick. Hey, Edwina. Oh, goodness, is everybody happy? You bet your life we aren't. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Um, yeah, take the pill as Alex said. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, compose myself. I'm on, I'm on about three pills of weight now, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Well, one, one thing is that, don't talk about A-level results, uh, because people do get upset. Um, have you heard the news today about the satellite navigation systems? They're going to start introducing, um, pin numbers. Uh, no. No, because, well, if, do you have one in your car? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, you were Greatest not... invention ever. Yeah, but you see, what's happening is, is that a lot of them have been stolen. Uh, people park, park their cars, forget mm. to take them out, yeah. uh, or hide them, and they go back and find the glass, you know, the window's broken, and yeah. they're stolen. They learn that in school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. But in a few weeks' time, manufacturers are going to introduce these satellite navigation systems with PIN numbers right. to stop believing. Excellent. But some people, some of the listeners out there, this is a good tip, some of you are leaving the destination to your home oh. on the sat-nav. The sat yes. So thieves who steal these, uh, you know, gadgets... Uh, find out where you live and know you're not there, so they're breaking into your home. So don't do it. Hey, you know what? I'd never thunk of that. Are you having me on? No, I'd never thought of that. It hadn't even occurred to me, but you're absolutely yeah. right. It's like writing your address on your home on your yeah. home keys. It's so easily done, though, isn't it? Huh. Yeah, so don't do it. Just erase it. Well, fortunately, it... I live on an inner city sink estate where thousands of other people are living as well. Yeah. We're crammed in 50 to a room. Oh, right. Well, why are you complaining about the cold, then? <laughs> <laughs> moan, moan, moan. Oh, listen, listen, can you do me a favour? You know Barry Manilow's uh, song, Bermuda Triangle? He's, he's got a line in there, woman, are you mad? Could you uh, clip that for one of your, um, you know, jingles that could, could apply to some of us females, please? <laughs> Um, I will take it under advisement, or okay. whatever they say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. No. Or yes, whichever it might be. Yeah, okay, then. Well, Thanks, Edwina. I hope all goes well. Cheers, my dear. Bye. Ta-ta. How about, um, Croydon? Hello, Aaron. Uh, hello, Nick. Aaron. Yeah, I'm 16. I just, uh, done my GCSEs, working on my results. And what everyone is saying is true. Uh, school is essentially a joke. Because uh, it is easy. Uh, easy? Yeah, easy. Well, you don't know that yet. You haven't got your exam results, have you? Uh, well, yeah, but... What are you expecting? Uh, a, 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 and A. Uh, no, I'm expecting Bs and the like, but the exam was easy. Because e I, I have 
um, one of our teachers gave us some old exams from, you know, uh, the olden times, like back in your day, and <laughs> they, you know, they, they were pretty hard. I couldn't, I couldn't handle them. Do you remember that uh, Channel 4 program about um, they took a bunch of 16-year-olds uh, and sent them, they pretended to send them back into time to the 50s and yeah. gave them uh, lessons from the year 1950s? And they all failed. Well, yeah, then the, spectacularly. And the first thing they did, and I, I don't think they were actually 16, I think they were a little bit older than that. First thing they did was they, they gave them uh, an exam. And... Uh, <laughs> And none of them passed. And then they s told them afterwards, what you've just sat was the 11 plus. Yeah. So in uh, the 1950s, what 11-year-olds knew, now 17-year-olds uh, <laughs> couldn't pass. Yeah, but what are the people worrying. in the 1950s doing now? Um, asking for spare change, please. Exactly. Working on a radio so, show, you know. So where did that great 11 plus get them? Yeah, exactly. But uh, I want to, I always harbored the dream of getting into radio like oh, yourself. don't and do it. <laughs> exactly. I sent you an email before asking for advice, and the best advice you offered me was, uh, don't do don't it. Don't do it's it, It's a horrible yeah. industry. Correct. So I was hoping you'd give more meaningful advice on the phone. Uh, you want to get into this business? Yeah, that business. Right. Are you, what, uh, what skills do you have? Uh, Are you um, interesting? Are you funny? Um, have you got I a lot of, uh, lot of witty things to say? Yeah. Well, then this is not the industry for you. Oh. They'll beat that out of you as soon as you start. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. telling you. <laughs> Sit down, shut up, read off the screen. That's what well, that's, they'll say. That's great, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to do that. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. But I'm not beautiful enough for the TV. Uh, well, I don't think you have to be beautiful for English TV. Only if you want to get on American television do you have to be beautiful. All right, well, yeah, thanks for the advice. If you, want, if, got, uh, if, you, if you have some sort of talent and ability, then go on television, and then from there you can easily get into radio. But don't just do radio, believe me. Yeah, I was hoping to just show it up and maybe, you know, go from there. Well, absolutely. If you show up at the weekend, we'll put you right on. Yeah. All right, I'll try that. Thanks. All right. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Bye. This is LBC. Um, how, how are we doing so far, chaps? Have you sorted out all of your little niggly little problems? I'm feeling a bit better now. I was a bit, I was a bit nervous at first because I couldn't hear anything and that was just because I hadn't turned the volume up. I've that's been... a beginner's mistake. Aww. Yeah, that's what they say. I have been doing it for a while, but yeah. You said that you did uh, something in Cambridge? I did, yes. I did, uh, I co-hosted a breakfast show in Cambridge. Hey, DJ! Ago. I used to have to say, uh, and that was, and this is. For the songs, in between the songs. Oh, so on uh, local radio in Cambridge, was it the BBC? No. All right, it would have been, um, and that was uh, Matt Munro, and here's Des O'Connor. <laughs> for the 3,000-year-old people who live in Cambridge, because you weren't broadcasting to the students, right, because they were young and hip and groovy and were listening to Radio One. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, you're right. It was the uh, nice ladies with babies. Yeah. No, nice old ladies with grandchildren, probably. Maybe, yes. <laughs> there was lots of um, aha, aha that we played, and I did that a lot. Aha! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it, it, yeah, I have CDs, but no one's going to listen to them ever again. Well, you nick the CDs from the radio station when you left. That's an excellent, <laughs> uh, excellent thing to do. Always take something when they fire you. Were you fired or did you leave of your own accord? I left of my own accord. Wow. Early mornings, couldn't take it. Yeah. What time did you have to get up? Four o'clock in the morning, right? Uh-huh. Quarter what to four. What a night. Quarter to four? Quarter to four. It is the death hour. It is. Yeah. It is. It's bad. I did it for a year. It's and horrible. Every fibre of your being is screaming at you to lie back down. Yeah, when especially you, when the alarm gets off, goes off at four in the winter. Oh, when you add insult to injury, you actually have to use your credit card to get the ice off the window. It's bad enough being tired, but being tired and cold and having to scrape ice off the window and going to do a silly radio show. Uh, <laughs> the thing I know is, I did breakfast for two years, and no matter how much you sleep. You still can't get up at four. You could go to bed at four o'clock in the afternoon the previous day. That's right. And your body still says nope. Uh uh. I used to have to. I used to have a nap and go to bed at eight o'clock in the evening because eight till four is eight hours. Yeah. Right. I award myself an A. <laughs> <laughs> a star, surely, for yes, next year. Absolutely. Oh, cheers. And um, 
And even with a nap and a full eight hours sleep, you still can't get up at four o'clock without the aid of at least two alarm clocks. It's awful. You're tired all the time. It's like you've got permanent jet lag. I, I don't know how people do it for any length of time. Oh, I, I did it. I did it for about eleven months. Although on my CV, obviously, it said a year. Yeah. It's <laughs> obviously. <laughs> what breakfast show were you doing, Alex? Um, talk radio. Oh right. Mm -hmm. Um, with with uh, McGiffin, the Gibbon woman. Gibbon was doing talk radio on. Uh, was doing the breakfast show on talk radio. Yeah. Really? What during Do you the week? Remember that? No. Yeah, with Paul Ross. Really? They were doing the breakfast show. Yeah, back in the day. I don't remember and then that they did weekend all. breakfast as well. What, together? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Huh. It won an award and everything. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, an award? Yeah. Oh, God, awards. I mean, awards <laughs> of any stripe are ridiculous, apart from perhaps the Oscars. I mean, you'd have to yeah. give it to the Oscars. They've been going for so very long mm. and all of the world tunes in. All Which other awards are, I just find, laugh out loud funny. I mean... Does a week go by when there's not an award ceremony of some sort? I like it when they award a BAFTA to a really famous Hollywood person and they don't arrive. Well, of course they don't, because they're thinking, BAFTA? BAFTA? What's what? that? It's the name of a dog? What is it? Who? <laughs> they couldn't care less. We think it's so very important, but people who actually matter won't even get in a taxi to cross town, let alone get on a plane. <laughs> it's true. And we treat them with the most with the utmost seriousness. Oh, it's the BAFTAs, it's the BAFTAs. It's just giving out stuff to whoever happens, to, who, to whoever's turn it is this year. Most award ceremonies now, aren't they, they're just, um, a sponsorship thing for companies. It's just like the such and such music awards. Yeah. Or such and such movie awards. And then they sell it to television, and so, and once they've done that and reaped the, um, reaped the big money, and that, then they, they can't stop. <laughs> because, uh, so much of their their yearly uh, income comes from that and so they're stuck with it now forever the goodie I mean, the bags the though. silliest awards of all are um the uh well maybe i shouldn't say this because we might have won some <laughs> but you know there's the american radio awards or the new york radio awards or whatever that oh, is yeah. that's the one they won oh like i said Did we win it? those are the only radio awards that a person would actually want to win yeah who won it oh no we're on the talk radio Oh, 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 that's the one. Ones. That's the oh. one that Carol won. Yeah, best breakfast show oh. in, in the world. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> not even Carol would claim that. Nope. <laughs> nope. Here is Stansted. Hello, Pat. Oh, hello there, Pat. Yep. Uh, two things. First, a nice little practical thing. Nobody needs to scrape ice off your uh, off their car window in the morning. Just go out with a kettle full of warm water, not hot water. Just pour it over and it clears it immediately. And see your windscreen shatter into a thousand no, pieces. No, it would if it was boiling water. Right. But not if it's, it's tepid water. What do you do with the kettle, then? Well, you just stick it in the car. Oh, right. Right. OK. Now, A-levels. Um, I've got a, an article from The Telegraph about a couple of years ago, and it said the reason that A-levels, the grades are creeping up, is the percentage in order to get a grade is lowering each year. In the 19, 8, 1985, it was 48 percent to get a C grade in maths. It's now gone down to 17 percent. Oh, 17 to get yeah. a C. So to get an F, that would be like, what well, would you have to actually do to get an F? Set fire no to the but invigilator. The thing, the thing is so worrying. The thing that I find is so worrying is nobody will ever publish percentages. So it. If you say, well, I, right, I've got an A level in, uh, an A grade in, yeah. in English. What does that actually what mean? Percentage? What does it mean? Yeah. And you actually get it in the primary schools. They say, um, your five-year-old has reached the level appropriate for a five-year-old. Mm. What is that? Does it mean they could read the B, though, or <laughs> do they know the alphabet? Say, but at 11. It's obfuscation read... and mendacity, Pat. Pardon? Uh, they're oh, lying to us. Mm. I, I just find it's all levels and grades. It's, not, uh, it's what I call weasel words. Yeah, exactly. And they're doing it for two reasons. First, we seem to have this notion that everyone must be a winner at all times. No one can yeah. actually lose anything, which is mm -hmm. one of the reasons they stopped school uh, sports days. Yeah. Because they don't want races, because people will actually come in last. Mm. <laughs> mm. But they do the same on reports. I now know and I've heard it from teachers, they are not allowed to say, 
your child has great difficulty reading. Yeah. They must not say that. Because it's an abuse of their honest. human rights. Yeah. They're not being honest. And the other reason is, of course, because the government can say, can turn around, and it's not just them, they all do it, mm. can turn around and say, look, under our munificent um, uh, leadership, children are far more intelligent than they ever were. Mm. Here are the mm. statistics to prove it. Mm, which is a load of rubbish. Yeah. Mendacity. But yeah. I don't think it's being fair on the children. Exactly. Think. Yeah, I'm not having to go at the kids. Yeah, and they're just saying, oh, you're so good. You've got three A's and mm. two B's. What percentage is that? What does it mean? But well, uh, they're, being, they're being given a fistful of A's, which would um, lead them to believe that they're well-equipped for mm. life outside. And then mm. they go, go into life outside and they find out, oh, hang on a minute, I've just been completely wasting mm. my time. Mm. Mm. I know. Oh, well. I, f I think it's very, uh, it's very sad for children because... They're, they're, as I said, and you've got it in the paper today, how is it that children cannot, or whether it's not young people go into work, they don't know what four eights are, or uh, they, don't know, they can't add up unless they've got a calculator. Mm. Well, you know, you, you find that in a bar. If you ask for two pints in a bar, they can't actually add two pints up. They have to go to the till yeah, and yeah. press it in and then tell you how much yeah. it is. Yeah. You see, nobody, I mean, what happens if there's an electricity cut? You see? <laughs> yeah, yes. I've... I'm sorry. I really and drink, all drinks are free from that moment real, on. Yeah. Well, yes, I, I'm a great one for everything. It's like music. Let's have some music without electricity. However, that's by the by. Uh, excellent programme. I do enjoy it. There's so many things, though, to discuss. You come up with all these interesting facts, and I want to talk about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, time is against us. I know. Well, that's why I, I've, uh, I've said my spiel for All now. right. Thanks a lot, Pat. OK, Cheers bye, -bye. Ta -ta. Yeah, I do skate off onto tangents. It's, um... It, I, and when I find out which pill is making me do that, I'm going to cut that one out straight away. I enjoy working with people. Yeah, I do. You, on the other hand, do not. And, and by you, I mean all of you. Uh, or most, anyway. Most you, you British... You people. I do. But at, at one re one removed, you know, as long as they're on the end of the phone, or uh, I'm shouting at them through the door, or something or like that. On your TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. As long as they're on television, then I don't mind them at all. You can switch them straight off. Mm -hmm. People, on the other hand, in real life, are a blooming nightmare. A bleeping nightmare. Yes, correct. People on the bus. Just anybody on public transport at all. I swear, I was saying this the other day, I'm the only polite person left in the whole wide world. Everyone else has got the, uh, the manners of a donkey. I was standing on the uh, up escalator today, and um, some dopey girl with half a pound of metal punched in her face and a moronic boyfriend decided to just st stop next to me on a crowded escalator on the, on the left-hand side of the escalator. Oh, no. Exactly. They must with have a, been foreign. With yeah. a, no, they weren't. With a, mm. with a giant queue of people behind them, tutting. Oh, no. But, of course, they didn't, no one wanted to say anything because they thought that, uh, you know, these days, if you say anything to anybody uh, under the age of 20, you get shot. I, I kicked a bloke in the leg the other day. For what? being rude. Kicked? Did yeah. You? It was at Waterloo and I was waiting in line at a shop a rush hour, and all these city types are going, filing past, and one pushed past me, and I thought, mm, rude. And then another one did it, on his phone, of course, you know, in a, a suit, just barged past me, so I just kicked him in the leg. What, in the like shin? A, yeah, it was like I half tripped him and kicked him. It was just a, 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 just a reaction. I didn't even think about it, I just booted him. And he was wearing a suit? Yeah. Yeah, he uh, wouldn't have done that if he was wearing a hoodie. <laughs> I don't know. And then he Psycho turned, Alex. And then he turned round. I know, I thought you were all passive and yeah, cuddly. Yeah, he, he turned round and then luckily I was bigger than him and he, he just, I like, said, you rude bleep and he walked off. <gasps> you freak. <laughs> I'm a bit frightened by you Yeah, now. I thought Sorry, you were uh, uh, like a muesli eating hippie. <laughs> but you're not. Yeah, don't mess. It's like I'm working Kids. with Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> That's not overstating it, is it? No. I did feel bad afterwards, if that Oh, well, he felt better. much worse, believe me. <laughs> Most people in Britain can't stand their colleagues, a poll shows. Have you heard this? Uh, mm. The majority dislike at least one other member of staff, while 20% hate their boss. A third have quit because they couldn't get on with their workmates, and almost as many think about it every day. What a... What a horrible state of affairs. You get up at a time in the morning where you don't want, you go into work, when, which is, you're working, and it's just so boring. And your mind is working overtime 
constantly because you're doing it with someone you just can't stand. What a position we find ourselves in, in the new millennium. Half say they feel excluded because there are too many cliques in their workplace. The survey also found that uh, more than half saw their job as nothing more than making money. Are we just prostitutes? <laughs> yes. Uh, the survey of 2,500 workers was carried out for uh, a uh, recruitment site who would dearly love me to mention their name on the air. Uh, hmm. Well, this comes as a surprise to absolutely no one who's actually worked in an office before, because we all hate each other, uh, partly because uh, we all work with each other uh, without having chosen the people that we surround ourselves with, and partly because to progress in the workplace you need to stamp on the hopes and dreams of those around you. Isn't that right? We're going to mm. start making a list now of all the people that uh, you hate, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and you can kick and them. Gonna be out we can line them up, and uh, you can kick them viciously. <laughs> they are going to be out buying shin pads straight away. <laughs> Here's Forest Hill. Hello, Karen. Hello. Um, I'm just ringing up um, to sort of go go of what Dawn was saying earlier, the young boiling lady that was going on about exams. <laughs> um, I did all my O levels way back in 1973, and then did A levels and went to university. And um, amongst those O levels, I did. Um, chemistry and maths and yeah. then just recently I, I decided to go back and do a second degree and I, I actually took some GCSEs and two of those were chemistry and maths again and I can honestly tell you that in 30 years um, they are just as hard as they were back then. Oh uh, yeah but had you l been learning chemistry and maths previous to taking the exams or did you rely on what you could remember from 30 years ago? No, I went to evening classes to refresh my memory and I wanted to see what the syllabus was like now compared to back then. It's, it's different, it's slightly different. So you took chemistry? Yeah, I did maths and chemistry again. I got exactly the same grades as I did 30 years ago. What'd you get? I got A's. <laughs> A's! Way! Can what I have does, a little... Uh, <laughs> what does, um, what does uh, carbon dioxide turn lime water? <laughs> Milky! <laughs> It's the only thing I know. You're saying that for days. I know, over and over and over again, because it's the only <laughs> thing I know. Yeah, but... Oh, yeah, I've just got a ringing in my ear. I think it's just as hard, it's, and the A-levels are just as hard as they ever were. I think perhaps the grades are more generous, but I think people really have to work hard to get, to get the passes anyway. Yeah, they have to stay awake during the whole course of the exam, yeah. <laughs> I, I really think people are working just as hard as they were back then. It's just that the subject matter's changed. Why did you go back and... What, what was the second degree you took? I'm doing biology. I just finished my first year. So, yeah. Can I ask you why? Why did you go back? Um, I don't know. I just don't you know. You don't know? <laughs> I just... I just um, you kind of reach a middle age, don't you? You have this crisis and you work through it and then you think, I've, I've got to... Do something. Karen, you should have gone out and bought yourself a Porsche or something. <laughs> no, no, I've got my little Rover. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> a Rover? Oh, no, you're not helping. You're, uh, you're part of the problem. <laughs> no, but it's just a new challenge. It's a new challenge, and it's like a new, possibly, career. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> and do you find it uh, easy to get back to... Uh, uh, learning again because um, there is a phenomenon that and I'll talk about this a little later that um, once you get past your early years your uh, brain synapses are set that's probably not the right word but I did psychology I can't remember a thing about it all your nodules in your head Karen they're uh, they're set in their ways and you and you find it learn and you find learning new things much more difficult than people who are uh, you know you this is so do you find it easier, or is it like a living hell? No, it's, um, it's, it's, it's difficult. It always was difficult, but it's... Um, I mean, I just got my first year grades, and I there were five grades that you could possibly get, and I was in the middle, so I'm quite happy with that. Right. And it's um, biology? Yeah. Right, so your knee bone's connected to you? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, you got oh no, you get an F. You <laughs> fail. Good oh, day, ma'am. My examiner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, best of luck, Karen. Thank you. All right, cheers. Ta-da. <laughs> Bye. Uh -huh. Yeah, the um, where is it? Oh, maybe I'll find that bit later on. They say that um, once you uh, start aging, then you can't do technology no more. Scientists claim to have worked out why people in their late 40s and 50s have uh, to get children to load their iPods for them. Well, more than that. I mean, first of all, they don't want iPods because they don't know what that is. 
but they they need people to um, they need their kids to figure out how to switch the TV on. Yeah, kids can just program a whatever straight out of the box, can't yeah. they? Without looking. That's right. It used to be DVD players. It's those sky boxes now. Oh, they're easy. That's the easiest um, no. electronic gadget that's ever been invented. Are you kidding? I well, I couldn't do it. I had to have what? the man come round and make it work. The sky box. Well, he, he came round and made it work. Seriously, that's the easiest gadget. The, 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 Alex is laughing at me. Here. The, is the best programmed gadget in history. Really? It's the well, most I mean, I user-friendly it, but... thing of all time, and you didn't know how to work it. I'm well, I know how to staggered. work it now. And but you're I... in charge of this show. <laughs> warning! Warning! <laughs> God, we it's made amazing Alex we're and still stuff. on the air. <laughs> The older you get, the more difficult it is for your conscious mind to override years of pre-programming, it say here. Uh, uh, researchers at Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh and Strathclyde University in Glasgow. Uh, combined with damaging physical changes in the cell structure of the brain and a little bit too much booze, it uh, means that uh, new things can be confusing at best. The research may explain why some people in their middle age find it difficult to work an iPod or browse the internet or their Blackberry, uh, where their children take to new technology almost instinctively. And I think that part of it is that there's a, a, a universal language of computer things. You know, you don't need to um, look at a, a remote too much to get it straight away, whereas my dad, he just forget it you know he, st he still calls the television the wireless i mean there's just no hope i think as well if you're constantly learning you you pick up new things more easily like yeah. if you let yourself lapse into not mm. learning anything new ever then when it does come to learning yeah. a new you know technology or whatever then you, then you're more stumped correct your mind is like a field of corn which has grown over the height of your head so that you can't if you don't exercise and, w and wander around that field then you can't see where you're going anymore. If, on the other hand, you uh, run about the field, then you will create pathways so that it will make your progress easier. That was quite a good uh, summary, actually. Oh, yeah, actually, quite impressed, actually. Yeah. Pretty good analogy. The research team set okay. out uh, to find a psychological foundation for the centuries old saying, you can't teach a dog new tricks. <laughs> The answer may be that older people are psychologically predisposed to find it harder than younger people to override established ways of doing things, they said. Uh, they will find it harder to adapt to digital TV, drive a new car with unfamiliar controls, and use other modern household um, tools and utensils. So, once again, psychologists studied the bleeding obvious and took a year to come up with what I could have told them in ten seconds. And probably spent loads of our cash doing yeah, it. Yeah, our money wasted on that. Old people can't work uh, the internet. Well, there's no surprise there. Is there, Philip? No. <laughs> Hang on there. We'll come with you shortly. The new news is on the way. All of it good, I expect. 909097. Nick Abbott. You're wondering what it's all about, and I can't tell you because I don't know myself. Further ado, do it's Mr. Lister. Good evening, Nick. Philip. I was having a cup of coffee this morning and looking at my latest list. Oh, it gave me a headache. <laughs> what is it? It's the USA Today, the top 25. I've cut it down to about 12 scientific breakthroughs. Scientific breakthroughs of the last 25 years. Yes. Right. Okay, uh, this would be good. Number 25. Can I guess? Can we make a game out of it? Can I guess? Oh, please. Uh, can I? Can I? Of course you can, but they're, they're, they're um, I mean, all right, yes, of course you can. Maybe um, you should tell me who done it, and then I'll tell you what they done. Well, the first one, Nick, the is, way around. is um, actually about a real-life hobbit. A what? A hobbit. You know, a small person from 18,000 years ago was discovered on an island in Indonesia. This is number 25. And had because they were amazed because the size of the brain. The missing the brain. link. Yeah, well, sort of, yes. They got a picture of him. And they uh, look very, very small indeed. Does he look like Jose Mourinho? No, no, no. He, uh, oh, right. oh, he looks, I don't know what he looks like. But he looks like the Hobbit, I suppose. Like Ronnie Corbett? Yeah, it could be. But he, he ain't got any clothes on. Ugh. <laughs> Number 24. The Golden Age of Solar Astronomy. The Golden Age of Solar Astronomy. Yeah, the International Solar and Heather Spheric Ob 
Observatory, sun-watching satellites began operations in 1996, opening up solar thermology and space weather forecasting. Uh, oh, yeah, that would be useful, yeah. They yeah. can't even uh, uh, detect what the weather's going to be like yeah. right now. Never mind about tomorrow on this planet, and they're going to tell us what the weather's like on the sun. For yeah. what purpose? Yeah, hot. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 20 is a bright... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be mostly hot, yes. with uh, giant streams of hot lava, yes. magma. Sunspots, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. 20 is abrupt climate change. They found evidence that the sudden climate shifts, 60 degree temperature jumps, doubling of rainfall, have occurred within the past 600 million years. Right, and you know whose fault that is? Uh, that lady who was driving the uh, Range Rover just a little while ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, hers. There's some worry that man-made global warming will spark similar shifts. Right. Right. Number 16, water yeah. on Mars. Who Earth. cares? Well, I mean, what difference does it make? There's water on Mars. I well, mean, it's if, there were, if there were little, um, if there were little hobbits uh, running around with no clothes on, it wouldn't make any difference. We still can't get there. It says that uh, NASA revs up its Mars program in 2000 to 2004 with satellite images and the, and the rover opportunity finding that salty seeds, salty seas, once sat on the red planet. Oh, big deal. How much did that cost us? Trillions and trillions of pounds, and they came back with pictures that they might as well have taken in the Sahara. Salty there was nothing seas. there. Salty seas go there for the What's the point, though, seriously, of, uh, of going to Mars? Really, what is the point of I going to I Mars? I think it's... I don't know, these scientists, I think they feel as though they got the money and they, they must spend yes, it, you know. Yes, I'm sure that's exactly it. Yeah, I don't In know much the same way as any scientific endeavour is all about the money. This is why yeah. these uh, surveys keep, these uh, surveys and research studies keep coming out. Yeah. Not because it actually helps us. I mean, this thing that said that old people can't program an iPod, because they're, basically said, because they're old and they're not used to it. Well, oh. duh. <laughs> and how much did that uh, yeah. uh, cost us? That's right, you know, it's... Uh, it's very interesting. I mean, as I'm getting older, you know, I mean, I find I'm still all right with uh, all the um, things, you know. Three <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed, Nick. The uh, things? Yeah, well, you know, videos and... Yeah, whatever you call them, yeah. Number 14. This is sad. Pluto dethroned. Ah. Uh. The discovery of Iris, a, a frozen world lar larger and further away than Pluto, leads the International Astronomical Union to disown Pluto. Poor thing. That I know. Did, never did a thing wrong. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it was... Oh. So what, uh, dis what um, uh, took Pluto's clothes? Uh, What's no. it called? Uh, what, the planet? Yeah. Iris. E-R-I-S. Frozen world. Eris. Eris. Oh, sorry, Eris. Well, I don't know. What did I say? Eris. Eris. You said Iris. Iris. Oh, Iris. That's your eyeballs. It's further away than Pluto. So it takes longer to get there, Nick. Eris? I've never heard of it. Yeah, I, I remember when it happened, you know, that they found it, you know. Well, I remember that they said that Pluto's not a planet anymore. Oh. And everyone shrugged their shoulders and said, uh, so? Oh, <laughs> so I mean, How's that going to help us? I don't know. That's, 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 it's a scientific breakthrough. They, oh, they found right. another planet, I suppose. Yeah. US and Chinese researchers, number 13. Have they made a scientific breakthrough to get gravy out of shirts yet? Uh, I don't know. That's a good one. Yes, I don't know. I'll have a go at that later on. Um, sorry, US and Chinese researchers find the remains of the first of many feathered dinosaur fossils, confirming the perception that birds are in fact descended from dinosaurs. Yeah. I thought we knew that. I've yeah. seen the uh, the film, Raptors. Oh, wow. Well. They'll slice you up with their big... Tallulah and uh, Budgie. Yeah, and their... Eh? Wow, well, about Tallulah's Budgie. <laughs> and the Budgie, yeah. <laughs> I always want to watch them birds. Suddenly turn into a... Number nine is something that you've got, Nick. Uh... Every, I think most people have got it now. The hump? No, the World Wide Web. Oh, right. Why not... No, OK, here's a question about that. The World Wide Web. Yeah. WWW dot. World Wide Web. Anything yeah. beginning with W, uh, if you say three times, is very, very difficult to say because you, you're getting your lips around it. It's almost yeah. like having... Um, running the marathon with your lips. Yeah. But WWW dot, that's ten syllables before you've actually said anything. Yeah. It's the only letter in the alphabet that's three syllables long. It's the only letter in the alphabet that's more than one syllable. Yeah. So they picked that one... So that to say anything, you actually had to say ten syllables before you said anything, yeah, which channel. rather suggests that the people responsible well, were idiots. Person who physicist Tim 
Berners Lee. Oh, he's a very good. in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. He was the guy. Unveils a method to link pages through the internet to share research, and now everything does, everything else. Yeah, everything else. Yeah. <laughs> But they could have called it anything, couldn't they? It yeah. wasn't, it, it, so they picked the World Wide Web. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's, 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 no, there's no possible reason for them to do that, other than they, they got an inkling of how successful it was going to be, yeah. and they just wanted to slow down the distribution of pornography. Mm. Number seven is one from Britain. We stand up and cheer. Dolly, the sheep. Uh, the sheep. Led the team behind the birth of the first cloned mammal. Right. A sheep named Dolly preceded horses, bulls, and dogs. Yeah, it was a clone who was wearing a lumber, lumberjack shirt and had a moustache. <laughs> uh, number six is DNA fingerprinting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it says that to the, it, it was Sir Alec Jeffrey at United Kingdom's University of Leicester was the person he accredited with it. Oh, right. Well done, mate. And Leicester. It's the only right. interesting thing that ever came out of Leicester. Am I right? Number four, the Hubble was launched in 1990, the Hubble yeah. Space Telescope. Right. Okay, and, and, and all they got with that was pretty pictures, which yeah. are lovely, by the way, but was it, was it really worth a hundred trillion pounds? Mm, that is basically going back to what you were saying about Mars, really. Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that eventually we're going to have to leave the planet, but d don't you think that we, it would be better, better to... Uh, Wait till the the energy revolution comes, so that we can actually um, power these things out of our orbit without um, Where do you think frying we're ourselves in the process. What planet are we going to, Nick? We're going to have to. We have to uh, leave the planet eventually. I mean, yeah. assuming that we all live that long, yeah. because the sun is going to expand and consume the planet that we're on right now. Oh, this ain't forever. Like that film, wasn't it? The day the Earth caught fire. Yeah, exactly. Oh dear, yeah. Number three is climate accord. It says here that it's gone from very likely to unequivocal. What? A few coincides uh, with growing public acceptance. Global warming. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. It's, if it's going to happen, then uh, if if it's actually happening, we've screwed it all up already. There's nothing we can do to reverse it. Just let it happen, you know. Number one... Just uh, lie back and hope for a better summer next year. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, if this is yeah. global warming, I'm not completely satisfied. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind the warm weather, it's just the humidity that gets me. It makes you so, you know, you don't want to do anything. Oh, but in the future, Philip, it'll be a dry heat. Oh, will it? Oh, that's something. <laughs> Number one. Now, this is an interesting one. Accelerating uniform... Universe, sorry. Accelerating universe. Exploding stars receding at ever faster pace stunned scientists by showing that the anti-gravity effect is relentlessly expanding the universe. This expansion still defies explanation. When you say stunned, do you mean put them into a deep sleep? Well, yeah, I suppose they took flipping it. We don't understand that. Yeah. They're all rubbing their heads and... What a load of rubbish that list was. Oh, there wasn't one, so you, one single useful thing in there, apart from the WWWs. Next week yes. is the 25 travelled milestones. Don't forget, you can always submit your own list, Nick. <laughs> you think, I've got the website if you want to send off your own list. No, that's all right. So you're getting these from the, uh, the American national newspaper called Useless Today. USA Today. I was sitting yeah. there this morning having me coffee and my, um, I had a muffin this morning. Smoking a fag. No, no, I don't smoke. And I was sitting there and me, I thought, oh, dear. You know. You know. Anyway. <laughs> and so what was that list called? It was called... The top 25 scientific breakthroughs. Top 25 scientific breakthroughs. I, I mean, I list some out, but uh, I tried to pick the ones that I thought would be of interest. Stem cells. I'm going to create my own list. Yeah. My own scientifically valid list, and I'll um, and um, my list will beat your list. I'll send it yeah. off to USA Today. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah. OK, thanks okay. a lot, Philip. Good work, Hello. as usual. ta -ta. Bye. Uh, so how's that, then? Why don't we uh, make a list? Because my in-out list stalled at the very beginning, didn't it? I didn't really plug it very much. I started talking about other things. It's all my fault, isn't it, Louise? Oh, hello. Hang on a minute. Oh, that's not that Louise. It's another Louise. Oh, I've got two Louises. How confusing. One's been waiting much longer than the other. Can I put you back on hold? Which one? You. <laughs> yeah, OK. All right. Cheers, my dear. Ta -ta. What a nice lady. Hi, Louise. Hi, Nick. Can I put you on hold? <laughs> Just for a minute. If you want. All right. Here's a break. We'll be back. We. Um.
um, oh, no, I know, I'm all confused. I'm listening, dear, you can talk to me. I'll just do you, Louise, and then I have to do some business. Hey, Louise. Hey, Nick. How are you going? I'm good, thank you. Super, thanks for asking. Good, good. I have a cashmere, um, jersey. Oh, well, get you in your I, fancy jersey. I, I was always told, I don't know if this is true or not, that they comb the goat's hair to get the of the cashmere stuff? They do. They comb it uh, gently from the uh, the coat of a goat, but they have to um, slice its head off before they do it. Yeah. No, they don't. Stop it struggling. Yeah. No, they don't. And, um, it always dies in the process. I want oh, you to enjoy yeah. that uh, cashmere jumper with the goat's compliments. No, it doesn't. They had to kill probably 30 or 40 goats just to get that uh, lovely thing that you can cuddle up with. Oh, my dad got me it anyway. It's what colour is it, by the way? It's like a bluey, whitey. A blue, and do you know how difficult it is to breed blue goats? <laughs> I think they die it. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they, they, the goats die, and then they die no, it too. No, yeah. don't say that. Yeah. Blood um, all over the place. Never mind, eh? At least you're warm. Yeah, and the thing with the thumbs as well, um, I think the reason why so many people are passing, it's not that they've got easy, it's just that, like... Anything that's uh, below a C grade as well, that's also counted as a pass. So that's probably something to do with it as well. Yeah, plus if uh, you get more than 17%, you get a C. I mean, <laughs> 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 it's difficult to say that without laughing. I mean, that's just I silly. Know. I know. I mean, sooner or later, people are just going to stop caring, aren't they? It's going to be like, you've got a degree and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got the very, very oldest joke in the world is um, was written on the toilet wall of the um, university that I attended, and it was uh, in one of the cubicles, and it said, social sciences degree, please take one above the toilet <laughs> roll. <laughs> and they were right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's annoying, though, because, like, I do study really hard, but to see someone who just comes in when they feel like it, and they still manage to get on to the next year... Well, that's always been the way. I mean, some people are just annoyingly smart. Well, they're not even smart. It's like, even if you fail your your first year or your second year or whatever, and you can't go into the year next year, they'll say, oh, you haven't failed. You just were unsuccessful this time. Come in next year, and we'll, you can get whatever you need to go on to your yeah, next year. Yeah, you failed. Yeah. Uh, unsuccessful means <laughs> failure. You fail. Why don't they? Say that though. Maybe it'll make people. Because in uh, in Tony's <laughs> new caring sharing uh, Britain, no one can fail at anything, even though they actually do. You can't say that they do because it would be an abuse of their human rights. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think Bill gets to you morning. You've been You what? Sorry. I said if someone said to me you're a failure, it gets me morning. Someone saying you've been unsuc unsuccessful. Right. <laughs> well, this uh, this call has been very. <laughs> Um, not unsuccessful, <laughs> if that makes you feel better. All right. All right. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Bye. Uh, to celebrate the launch of the brand-new Xbox 360 Elite this Friday, we're going console... Cr <laughs> <laughs> Did you write this, Georgia? No, I promise I didn't. We're going console crazy oh, yeah. all week. Be among the first to get your hands on the Elite with our How Low Reverse Auction today. And, as if that were not enough, we're throwing in, not literally, but figuratively, a Samsung 26-inch LCD TV to give you something equally fantastic to play it on. This snazzy new games console not only comes with a sleek black package, uh, as a sleek black package, with a wireless motion sensing controller, but has a whopping... 120 gigabyte hard drive. Has it got Intel in it? In it. Bing bong, bing bong. Uh, that is six times more original and twice as much capacity as the original PS3. You'll be able to download and store more music, games and movies than ever before. Add all this to your slam, sam, Samsung flat screen uh, with its special game mode and you'll never want to leave the house again. I never want to leave the house and I haven't even got one. Imagine if I had one. You'd need heavy lifting equipment to get me to leave. Text LBC plus your bid in pence to 88821. For example, if you bid uh, 45 pence, then it would be uh, 88... No, wait a minute, hang on a minute. I'm getting my head around this. If you bid 45 pence, you would text LBC 45 
two treble eight two one. Did I get that right? Bids cost one pound fifty plus your standard network rate. Lines close at eleven thirty this evening. Holy macaroni! It's in nine minutes. Bidders must be over sixteen, uh, or sixteen, sixteen or over. They must be sixteen or over. See uh, our website www dot lbc dot co.uk slash competitions for full terms and conditions. Hockey slash donkey. <laughs> this is LBC. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> That's from what I think is quite possibly the funniest film ever made. And uh, if you told me that before, I s before I'd seen it, I would never have believed you. It's the remake of The Producers, mm. the Mel Brooks thing. Really? I've seen that getting on for ten times in the last few months alone, every time it comes on TV, I just watch it again. And, and I'm laughing out loud in hysterics from the very beginning, every time. You've got to see it. It's hysterical. Well, you know, I've watched the first one. What? Well, so I watched the first ten minutes of the first of one. Of the first one, of with the Zero original. Mostel and Gene Wilder. Yeah, yeah, I hated it. Well, you know what? I, in my memory, I thought that I liked it, but when it came on TV the other day, yeah. I lasted... Uh, not quite as long as you did. I thought because a lot of the lines are similar. Oh yeah, so and I thought like it. every line that they're reading, uh, the, 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 that they're saying, that also appears in the new film, is funnier in the new film than the original. And I thought it would be the other way around, having not seen that the original for a good long while. I thought I'll go back to it, I and it. Um, and I'll remember that I actually missed Gene Wilder and Zero Mostel. But you know what? The new one is is funnier on every level. It's I think it's the funniest film ever made. It's brilliant. Really? It's certainly the funniest musical ever made. That's really unusual because normally sequels, well, not sequels, but remakes are considered to be worse. That's right. Apart. Yeah. Well, um, and for uh, uh, what's his name, D um, Mel Brooks, mm. in the twilight of his years, I mean, he must be like seventy years old now, isn't mm. he? To come up with the the best work he's ever done. Well, well, that's just sensational, isn't it? Yeah, it's fine. Here I am lapsing into DJ speaking. It's sensational. <laughs> Hope it's not my presence. Here is uh, Loughton. Hello, Louise. Oh, Louise. Louise has gone quite right, too, because I put her back. I said a little, hi, hello, how are you? And then I put her back on hold. Shall I try her again or no, not bother? Let's have Chiswick. Oh, Julia. Good evening. Julia. Nice how are you? First of all, I'm fine, but I want to tell you probably the biggest compliment you have ever had. So prepare yourself. You find me really horny? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not exactly that. But whatever I'm doing in the house, as soon as I switch on the television and it's you, I stop everything. Right. And I listen to every word because I love your dry sense of humour. Wow. Are you drunk? No, I don't drink. <laughs> Uh, but I do want to know one thing. Do you watch The X Factor? Well, now that's an interesting question because um, last year, yes. And I thought, this year, I thought, mm. but I thought, oh, well, what the hell, I'll just watch it. And mm -hmm. I lasted about 30 seconds. Really? Because I thought, well, first of all, they did the, all this garbage about... Um, Louis oh, Walsh. We fired Louis Walsh. And, mm. and I'm beginning to suspect that well, that entire episode was Surprise. just a publicity stunt. Yeah. The firing of him, because this was in the off-season, right? Just, mm -hmm. uh, just to keep, pe yeah. just keep the show in people's minds mm -hmm. and to give them a big um, uh, a publicity push when they came back. I think that they didn't fire Louis Walsh. They had, the, uh, none, of, none of that was true, mm -hmm. and the whole thing was a giant setup because the publicity machine behind this program yeah. is bigger than anything I can think of. But I mean, I even the Olympics is not really hyped this much. you had watched it last night. It was fabulous. The people, I don't know where they dragged them out. Well, from. the reason I turned it off was with yeah. the, the very first person they had up, uh -huh. who was uh, an old lady, looked like a very nice old lady, yeah. but she had something of a... She looked like she had something of a mental... Yeah, she disorder, wasn't, yeah. yeah. Well, well, not disorder, Borderline but she was Borderline personality. Disorder. Yeah, she was uh, maybe um, a couple of rounds short, a couple of sandwiches <laughs> short of a picnic, or yeah. however you want to, uh, to describe it. Yeah. She seemed like a super lady, mm -hmm. but she wasn't quite all there, as mm -hmm. many of the people who go there. Now, the ones that you see on television have been... They, they don't... 
show the the, the guys behind the desk mm -hmm. they don't see everybody they see maybe i would guess uh 50 to 100 people oh, really? the people that they see have yeah. been pre-selected mm -hmm. because the everyone who shows up will get seen by somebody from the production company who oh. will weed out the really good ones mm -hmm. and the really mentally disturbed ones. Oh, there are plenty of those. Right. And so the, the people that you see, they're not just like a random selection of people who come in. They have mm -hmm. been chosen because they're either obviously mentally ill <laughs> or they're great. Yeah. Now, it's... And I was eating at the time and I thought, mm -hmm. well, you know what? This is actually giving me indigestion. <laughs> Because the woman, she started to sing, and obviously there's something not quite right there. Yeah. And so what we were being asked to do was to laugh yeah. at a nice old a lady, poor lady. Yeah. who I, I really had that. no idea why yeah. she was being laughed at. And you could see the, the concern in her eyes as mm -hmm. the people behind the desk were a sniffly and, uh, and with a that, superior yeah. attitude, yeah. laughing at at her, in her face, and I thought, you know what, this is actually yeah, really yeah. deeply, unpleasantly nasty, yeah. and I'm not watching this anymore, and so I turned off. Well, I must tell you, I never watch it, but I watched, I just happened to catch it. God, he has the, he has the whole of the Jeremy Kyle audience there, <laughs> all crying out for a part. <laughs> I really think it's just, uh, it was, it's really funny though, Nick. I wish you had watched it. Well, mate, I haven't deleted it from my system. Well, you haven't? Yet. Oh, just have a look. All right. And remember me. Okay, I will. <laughs> Especially when you see the one with the scarf and no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you, now I've heard that, I'm going to have to watch it. Uh, okay. All right, thanks, Julia. Bye. But it's, uh, it's actually quite frightening because, you know, we wander around in our own uh, perfect little bubble and we only really interact with the people that we have chosen to interact with, our friends and uh, neighbours and the, the shops that we go in and so forth. And we don't really come up against the general public that much unless you work on a show like this or you uh, see people who have gone to um, uh, audition for The X Factor. So it comes as quite a shock when you see how many mentally disturbed people there are wandering around outside voting and worse having children they're passing on those genes which is one of the reasons why we're in the state that we're in but what can you do about that apart from give people an exam that they have to pass before having children which actually is an excellent idea but no politician would ever say uh, such a thing we'd have to be in a dictatorship to uh, get away with that but um, it is a bit of an eye-opener when you see large amounts of the general public um, because these are mostly people that you would cross the street to avoid, right? And that you don't come into contact with. You don't hear them speak or <laughs> even uh, less rarely uh, sing. So, it, yeah, it is a bit of a shock to realise that um, perhaps the majority of the population has grave mental issues. Don't you find that a little bit concerning? I'm scared. So we'll be back after the new news with a lot of people who are <laughs> fully sane, I'm sure. Hi, honey. How are you? Hi, Louis. How are you? Louise, I mean. Oh, this is Louis here. Yeah. Hi, Louise. Oh, hi. How are you um, doing? No, I had to leap out of bed. I was in bed doing the crossword. <laughs> Which one? The easy one, crossword collection. Oh, right. In general knowledge. Uh, because that... Um, the university, whoever it was, doing the research that um, older people can't yeah. use the internet, which is a load of tosh, really. <gasps> because I'm in my Mouth 70s. Mouth on you, Louise. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my 70s. I can use the internet, uh, the digital uh, television, uh, you know, and all these gadgets. So um, it's, it's, a, it's rubbish that we can't use these newfangled gadgets. I've got a mobile phone. The only thing I haven't got is an iPod. Huh. Mm. Well, you, um, you are a unique and special lady. Yeah, I'm because just I think one I th of the hundreds of or thousands of silver surfers. Silver surfers, that's what yeah. they call them, yeah. dictionary. <laughs> huh. So my dad, when he claims uh, that he can't work anything that was invented after the 1930s, Oh. What he's actually saying is he can't be bothered and will someone else do it for him. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And if you learn to do it, you can go on these courses, you know, they start you off 
how to uh, switch the gadget on, how to file and that sort of thing. Yeah. And you go home and you practice. And it's easy because, and women especially, we can press buttons on um, washing machines, <laughs> microwaves, you know, ovens. So we, we know how to use gadgets. Yeah. It's just one we move from that. I tell you what, though, there is, uh, there is a certain um, language that you use with computers especially, but with gadgets in general. Mm. And, it, and coming to it afresh, I can't imagine anybody of, um, who isn't uh, a school child opening a computer, for instance, and trying to figure out uh, w what to do. I mean, I wouldn't... Uh, well, because the instruction manual is in the machine itself, so you have to actually be able to work the machine to be able to figure out how to work it. Well, the trouble with with the language of computers is it's it's Americanized for start, so it's default. You have to learn. We when we say by default, it's not the same as a computer default. Default is the right one on the computer. Default for us is something that happens by accident. Yeah. Which uh, is, is, mo is most of my experience. So you have to you have to yeah. you have to learn some of the language, but you don't need to know everything. You use as much of it as you want to use. You know, I, c I can use it for the internet shopping. I've even studied on it. I've done courses on it. Um, but I won't. I wouldn't do uh, things like photography and um, or graphics that sort of thing because yeah. I can't do that type right. of thing. You know, so I mean, it's it's not a it. They're not difficult machines to use. It's just a mindset that prevents people from getting in touch with a computer. Yeah, uh, uh, I think that it's the fear of. Um, uh, partly, it's lazy, and partly it's the uh, fear of um, not being able to understand. So you just don't bother. Mm. And uh, partly, they are actually right that the uh, the the older you get, you do need to. Like crosswords, for instance. Yes. Since okay. I've started to do crosswords, um, you're probably uh, guffaw at this concerning, um, you, you know, uh, con concerning my performance so far, and I can't believe that I'm stumbling over these words. But I've, I've been able to um, pluck words uh, from the air. Uh, much. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm failing can explaining you, can you do this. Cryptic crosswords. Well, that's what I've started well, to I do. Can, I just can't attempt those. Well, you know how? Because I always thought that as well. I can't do those cryptic crosswords mm. either. Now I'm absolutely hooked on the cryptic crossword on the back page of the Telegraph. Oh right. And all you have to do is just get the Telegraph one day, and mm. then get it the next day, and the answers are in the next day, and just compare the answers to the to the clues, mm. and then you'll figure out what they're talking about. But they're, they're hidden clues, aren't they? That's that's the point of... Yeah, that's right. It's, it's supposed to be It's difficult. a hidden clue. Yeah. Yes, yes. So he's not actually asking you for the answer that you think he is. Yeah, it's you know supposed I mean? to be uh, sneaky. Yes, know. yes. I mean, I can't do the Sudoku, because it's, um, no, I'm, I'm it's not, all to I, do with figures, and I'm yeah. absolutely hopeless with I don't figures. do numbers, I do words. I mean, I can do my tables, my times tables, like that lady said, why don't they? You know, they don't know, children today don't know the times tables. Um, I, I can do that. Ask them what six eights are, and they'll stab you in the yes, face. Yes, that's right, yes. <laughs> But anyway, lovely, lovely show. All right, thanks a lot, Louise. <laughs> yes, I, I really enjoy listening to you. Okay, cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Bye-bye, dear. Bye-bye. Bye. 11.37, this is LBC. Uh, here is Wallington. Oh, Joan. Hello, Nick. Hey, Joan. I've got a little theory about memory and learning when you get older. Oh, yeah. I think you start off with um, just so many little cell boxes, which are your memory boxes. Yeah. And obviously when you're young, they're all empty. You know, and anything that comes your way, you just, oh, pop it in the box, pop it in the box, it's in there. Right. And then you get to a certain time when you're not, you've n nearly filled up all the little boxes. What? And you say, uh, is it really worth remembering? Because, you know, I've got to be a bit selective now. And I think you do get a lot more selective about what is worth remembering as you get older. Right. And if it's interesting... And you really think, oh, I'm into this. Then you will remember it as easy as peasy. And if you think, no, it's boring, you don't remember it. You don't want to bother. Right. I also think that the uh, the way you conduct your life um, uh, may or may not collapse some of those boxes. Like if you're on the booze a lot, like for instance, Carol can barely remember where she is at any given <laughs> time of the day. Well, there's a 
point. Yes, I suppose. I, Keith Richards thinks he's in the Who, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Oh, goodness sake. Oh, which reminds me, does the name John Crocker mean anything to you? No, it does not. Oh, I thought you'd been in, you know, jazzy music. Who's John Crocker? Well, he played for years and years and years with um, Chris Barber. Who's that? Oh, crumbs. <laughs> oh, you're awful. Chris Barber? Who's that? Oh, goodness. He had a band for ages and ages. He had the best stuff imaginable. Well, what year? What era was this? Well, I think he's still going on a bit. But So you haven't heard that music? Well, what kind of music is it? Jazz. Sort oh, of jazz. Yowza. No. No, don't oh, know. Oh, right, right. No, I know my Chet Bakers and my, um... Yeah. Well, that's uh, a bit... Yes. Anybody else? It's a bit what? Well, all right, all right. Chet Baker, all right? Yeah. Oh, come off it. <laughs> uh, you now, know, who would you say was the best drummer ever? The best drummer ever. Keith Moon is the oh, correct you're answer. Joking. No. For entertainment purposes, Keith Moon was absolutely the best drummer ever. No. And that's an actual fact. No, John. you haven't broadened your sp perspective enough, really. Yeah, You've got to take in some other drummers. Like they said at Spinal Tap, too much perspective. That's not exactly what they said. There was a bleep in there, but, you know. Oh, goodness. It's well, just commercial radio. Anyway, you do. And the other thing is... Yes. The other thing is... Yes. Pluto. Pluto, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was some university students or something suddenly came out with that. Right. It's absolute nonsense. They're wasting their time with because that rubbish. Pluto Who cares? is very, very influential and very important. And there's no way it's not a planet. Influential only. and important? Yes. It's the strongest influence of all the planets on us. Huh? Yeah. In what way? Well, You're not talking about astrology now, are you? Of course I am. Oh, no. Oh, God. Well, if you, you know, all the big, big events in your life, mm -hmm. they'll have Pluto in them. Oh, yeah, undoubtedly, yeah. Of course they will. <laughs> I mean, you only have to, somebody only has to tell you, oh, my God, my marriage is in trouble, oh, she's doing this, he's doing that, yeah, and, it's, and it's all going yeah, wrong. It's and the dog, say, <laughs> yeah. And just, <laughs> and you say, oh, my God, it must be Venus Pluto then. And it's true, and you'll find that that's... That works every time. It's a Venus Pluto. Well, you make a, a very good case, Joan. I've never heard such load of old rubbish in well, all my life. You don't know anything, do you? Well, that's also true, yeah. Oh. And you should try the skeleton crossword as well. The what? The skeleton crossword. What's that, then? Sunday paper. Well, they only give you about, oh, three or four black squares. They don't give you any numbers. Well, maybe three. Maybe three numbers. And you've got the clues. And the clues don't tell you how long the word is, or the words are. And uh, so you have to make up the whole thing almost yourself, as well as having cryptic clues. There aren't enough hours in the week. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. If you like, if you like crosswords. Well, I, yeah, I like crosswords, but I, I also like, you know, sleeping, watching <laughs> TV, eating. <laughs> My brain's hurting just thinking about it. Well, you see, that's something to keep you from getting old, isn't it? You um, start doing skeleton crosswords. Yeah, I'll tonight. be old before I finish the first one. No, mm -hmm. I'll stick with the one on the back of the telly. Oh, all right, then. But thanks a lot, Joan. Thank you. Cheers, my dear. Okay. I hope that uh, Venus is in your house, or whatever the hell um, you people say. Well, so long as it's not messing with Pluto, we're all right. Oh, I know. That would be disgusting. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> thanks a lot, Joan. Thanks. Bye-bye. Ta-ta. Uh, the X Factor. Did you watch that mess the other night, chaps? I missed it. I usually love it, though, because I like the way... I'm afraid I... I know it's slightly cruel, but I like laughing at people. Yeah, it's not slightly cruel. It's very cruel. And previously, <laughs> I thought it was amusing as well. Maybe it's, it was just the very it. first one um, struck me as deeply unpleasant. You know, because they are repellent people, the people behind that desk. Louis oh, and... Yeah. Um, that plastic, Simon. that plastic woman that they've got now. I mean, she's she's so plastic. She looks like she fell out of a cornflakes box. Is that uh, is that Danny Minogue? Danny Minogue. Yeah, they, yeah. I knew they were, I read that they were bringing. There's her a Minogue in. that's even less talented than Kylie. Can you <gasps> believe it? But we love Kylie. 
Why? Oh, no, she's just, just like... Oh, she just buttocks. isn't. Whatever you are going to... You like her because of her bum? Is that what you just said? Well, she just, you know, for a lady of 35... She's three feet tall. She is very tiny. I met her once. Well, no, I made, made a cup of tea for her. Met is a strong word. Yeah. But, uh, the, the, you know, she is a tiny, tiny creature. Right. Of no discernible talent whatsoever, am I mm. right? Um... I mean, all of those songs that she's made could be... It could be anybody singing on them. She's like Madonna Light. Yes, I mean, okay. Madonna's no great talent. No, a Tremendous Madonna businesswoman, but, uh, but she can't sing. I can sing as well as Madonna can. She annoys me more than Kylie. I like Kylie more than Madonna, I think. Madonna's a bit too kind of, like... The... Well, I know I'm bringing it back to the physicality of the thing again, but Madonna's arms are frightening. Yeah, what's that got to do with anything? Well, it puts me off her. Well, she's trying to hold back the years. Aggressively. Like uh, Simply Red says. She well, can yeah. hold back anything with those mm. arms. <laughs> I think Madonna's excellent. I think she's constantly changing herself. I mean, you could say, yeah, she's jumping on a bandwagon, whatever one comes along. But, but then you could say that of David Bowie. Yeah, but, you know, at least she's not boring. Yeah, but if you were down a dark alley and Madonna was coming for you, wouldn't what, you be what, scared? What? Well, no, uh, only because she'd be surrounded by th six foot uh, <laughs> bouncers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you're right, uh, Alex. At least Madonna's got something about her, and she's produced some excellent albums. So I could maybe name three of them that I wouldn't mind listening to of an afternoon. Kylie, on the other hand, I mean that's just cotton candy. That's just what about, rubbish. That stuff. But what about the spinning around song? Um, uh, yeah, it, like I said, it could have been made by anybody. It just happened to have her name on it. Well, Anyone could have sung that song. There's no discernible style to it. They just make a song, produce it, and they, they stamp her name on it. It could be anyone, is which is which is not the the indicator of a great talent, is it? I don't know. I think she. I think she's a star. I think she's got star quality, and she she's a fairly decent singer. I don't she think she's isn't. exceptional. She doesn't have star quality. They just uh, create a video that makes her look like she does. Looks glossy. Yeah, you could be in that video. Oh, they could dress nice. me up. I could do it with the hood in the in their white outfit with the hood. Whatever the it hot is, pants. and the hot is the gold hot pants. <laughs> you see how ridiculous this is. You like her because of her bum and her hot pants. She's a singer. Say, I can res I respect her for the bottom. I think this is absolutely ludicrous conversation. Anyway, um, her sister. Uh, they're, they're all very, very plastic, apart from uh, Louis Walsh, who just kind of makes my skin crawl. And then they had somebody in the middle, I don't know who that is. Um, oh, the uh, the other plastic woman. Sharon. Sharon, Sharon, yeah. Looks like she's had a lot of oh, work. Oh, she has. She's had amazing work, though. Yeah. I'd like to know her plastic surgeon. Well, I think they sucked all the uh, fat out of her ass and s stuck Switched it in her it face. Into the face, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then uh, Simon Cowell on the uh, on the end there, the king of the plastic people. I swear, mm. his teeth are so white. Next time you go and have your uh, teeth cleaned this, Simon, try and pick a, a shade that's uh, a little less glaring. Last time I saw anything that white, it was um, uh, warning ships off rocks. The Volkswagen Fox from just £6,602 RRP. be funny because I'm all out of last. Here's uh, Orpington. Hello, Ginny. Oh, good evening. Congratulations on starting to do cryptic crosswords. You do realise, though, don't you, that the telegraph crosswords are the easiest ones about. Oh, don't say that. Oh, yes. It, it, the Guardian, they name their setter every day, and some of them are really difficult. Um, I would never try uh, Paul, for instance. They often do him on a Saturday as a surprise one. And the Times is consistently difficult. So you're saying, I'm uh, on, the e on, on the beginner's slope? Yes, you're on the beginner's slope, but keep going, uh, unless uh, you feel very attached to buying the Telegraph. Uh, well, I do find it's the best paper. I can't, I can't take the Times, because I just don't like its format. Well, it I don't take the Times, because I wouldn't put money into the pockets of that <laughs> man, but I take the Guardian. Yeah, well, the thing I'm thinking about the Guardian is that it's... Boring! Yeah, a little too boring, yeah. Oh, I don't find it boring at all. Depends on your boredom threshold. Yeah, very low. Mm -hmm. But do it stick with it. I mean, you're on a very good learning, uh, learning curve. I find that, I, that it has actually um, uh, helped me. I feel much less stupid now, as shocking as that might sound, than before I uh, started doing them. Well, I started very late in life, which is a great shame. The person that I know who does the Times every day 
she started at about 18. Well, you know, you can never catch up on that. Right. And I started really, I can't remember, quite late 60s. Uh, I but they're quite addictive, aren't they? Yes. And do you feel that it is actually, uh, like, oiling your brain? Yeah, yes. I, th yeah. I think mm, it, it, uh, it, it is, they are very difficult. And they're very good for your brain. I'm sure they're good, yeah. good brain. Work. Because the reason that I started it was to stave off the uh, inevitable mental decline, which I felt was, uh, you know, advancing upon me with uh, each passing day. That's right. I am much nearer the, the mental decline than you, and that's what I felt would be very good. Well, of course, you haven't met me, Ginny. You might not say that if you uh, if we have well, met I in person. I don't know what age you are. Well, it's uh, it's not the your your actual age. It's your mental age, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I, it has something to do with it, too. I, actual rust falls out of my ears while I'm sleeping. <laughs> I haven't noticed what drops out of mine. <laughs> so that's what you called in to tell me that the, 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 what I thought was quite hard is actually the uh, laugh-out-loud simple. The learner ones. It's, well, no, no, they're not, but they're good, for good learning ones. But they're the ones that can be done, you know, with, with thought. Right. But why would they put it on the back of the telegraph, which is, uh, you know, considered to be uh, the, the thinking person's paper? Well, I wouldn't tell you what I think of the telegraph, but then that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, as you read The Guardian, I think I can guess. <laughs> yes. All right, thanks a lot, Ginny. <laughs> Cheers, ta -ra. So She was ca calling there from the, uh, the Heathrow camp. As uh, I bet every single person at the Heathrow camp reads The Guardian. And, you know, they seemed like, uh, it was quite interesting, because the press were painting them as uh, absolute freaks and uh, anarchist Nazi uh, sympathisers, weren't they? They were just painting them, with a, they were painting them with a giant black brush. And they just seemed like the nicest people. A little confused, perhaps. Well, not confused, but um, a little too hopeful that they were actually going to make a difference. They won't. They probably don't uh, admit that to themselves, but they're actually going to make no difference at all. They're right about almost everything that they say. You know, there's no denying that, but it, it would be nice if they, they didn't have another runway at Heathrow, because, blimey, we've got f planes flying over the whole of London. Why they have to fly over the whole of London to go to Heathrow is a mystery to me. I mean, planes don't have to have a wind behind or in front of them, do they? I mean, the, yeah. the horsepower that they've got, they can, they can, they can land in a in a gale coming sideways. Surely, well, they're supposed to land into the wind, right? And well, the wind certain, um, does not always come from the west, does it? No, they fly they, over they me. They do switch. They 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 come from the north. They go all the way over the north of London. They no. hook a turn uh, at, the, at the east, and then they fly all the way down the river, basi yeah. basically upsetting everyone in London. Why do they do that? That's the because the the wind is normally coming from the west. Right. Well, I don't care about that. So <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. They generally fly into the wind. Well, that's very nice for them. But what about us? We're woken up know. at six o'clock in the morning. I used to live under the flight path. Did you? In southwest London, yeah. Ooh. And it was like a wake up call courtesy of British Airways yes, every morning. Every day, yeah. Hello, Here's every your afternoon. Every afternoon. wake up call. As I super glue myself to uh, the balcony in order not to get blown off by the uh, f fresh westerly breeze, it's ruined every 30 seconds by a giant airliner, uh, which. And they don't sound nice. They used to sound great planes, prop planes. Every now and again, once in a blue moon, a prop Gee, plane will come over. Lad. I know, and uh, and they were. It's a, it's a lovely sound, a propeller. It's organic, in it. That uh, nice uh, lady who uh, reads the Guardian will be well appreciate, appreciative of it. The current uh, models, however, are not organic. They, it's a. Uh, it's like a scream from hell as they come over. They do not sound nice, by which I mean at all. You know that big, fat superliner, whatever it's called, that thing that's twice as big as a jumbo jet? The Airbus. That flew over, um, was it last summer? They did a test run. Oh, yeah. Was it even louder? No. It was, uh, it, it was like listening to a plane with, uh, with socks in your ears. It was very, very soft. And I'm sure that they bust a gut to ensure that it was very soft. I bet they stripped the plane out, made it as light as they possibly could, and the uh, pilot was uh, under instructions that no matter how much fuel he used, he had to make absolutely sure that it would made as little sound as possible. So to um, soften us up 
for the um, for the, the thing to be uh, put into service, and it'll be uh, flying over us. Once it's actually in service, I'm sure it will sound like screaming banshees, <laughs> just like Concorde. They used to say, "Oh, well, you know, we've done tests, and Concorde is not actually louder than any other plane." That wasn't well, true. <laughs> well, not true at all. No, your chimney used to fall off every time Concorde went over. Yeah, it was oh. only twice a day, though, wasn't it? What a shame that that bird ain't flying oh, no I more. I really, I can't believe they took it out of out of what you call it before I had a chance to go on it. Before I can't it believe enough. I can't believe that we're actually f slower now than we were thirty years ago. Really? Isn't that ridiculous? It's weird. I'm having to take my clothes off. Alex has put the aircon up so high in here. Yeah, that's, that's method <laughs> not, to my sorry, not all my clothes. I just took my cardigan off. But <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's now okay. really okay, warm well, you, inside of the glass. You go along with your bad self. <laughs> 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 you just conduct yourselves in whichever way you feel fit, <laughs> and I'll that, carry on with my little show, shall I? That, that dial is fully to the right now. Here is uh, uh, someone or something on the A12. Hello. Hi, yeah. How are you going? Oh, not too bad. I'm, I'm just on the A12 near Old Ford, and I think you ought to do something about the pirates down there, because every time I come, come past there, they block you out. Yo, 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 with a posse! Yeah, like that. The that's the one. Do they yeah. ever shut up? I mean, uh, as a pirate, you'd think that your mission would be to bring music to the people. Music to, uh, you know, music that doesn't ordinarily, uh, ordinarily get, get played on the radio. That's their stated purpose. Their actual purpose is to um, uh, abuse themselves on the air by uh, abusing us. Just shouting constantly. They just don't shut up. It's like... A shouted talk show listening to a pirate station, it's painful. They're not actually yeah, I, entertaining anybody but themselves. Yeah, I, I, I find it really infuriating. But the other thing I was phoning up for was um, to remind you that we have changed our environment by stopping the use of asbestos, DDT and uh, CFCs and lead in petrol and all the other crap that we used to use. Right. So... Uh, so when you say we can't really do anything, just remember that you can't buy arsenic over the counter to poison anybody anymore. I could do with a couple of pints of that myself. Yeah, and we don't use it in paint, so, you know, there are things we have changed, so just, just like, what we change, we change. What we don't change, well, that's, we do, that's We don't change, thing. yeah. You know, okay. Smoking, smoking was good for everybody when I was a kid. Nobody ever died of smoking. Now, everybody seems to be dying of smoking. Are they lying to us? Uh. No? I mean, has Al-Qaeda put something in the cigarettes? That's why we can't smoke indoors. <laughs> I mean, that's what my friend reckons, that the Americans invented something to drop in the cigarettes, drop behind enemy lines and incapacitate the enemy. Well, your friend is making a lot of sense. You know, but then uh, he reckoned the uh, CIA bumped her off to stop her marrying a Muslim. But there you go. <laughs> Yeah, OK. There's, we'll another, like there's another show. I think you called the wrong station. I'll, uh, we'll redirect him to the other lot. They'll be talking about the CIA and Diana until the, uh, literally until the cows come home. Uh, yeah, you can change um, aspe uh, asbestos, but I was uh, talking more that if we, if by our evil ways, because everybody wants to um, drive to the supermarket and not take the bus, Everyone wants a flat screen TV. If by our evil ways we've actually changed this, the weather on this gigantic planet, then you'd have to say, how the hell are we going to stop that? Other than by going back to the Stone Age tomorrow. And we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that because we want all these uh, luxurious comforts that we've become used to. And so do India and China. They'd like to become used to it too. And so if, uh, if, by our few people in the West behaving as we have done over the last 30 years, we've screwed up the planet, then we've re we're really, there's absolutely no hope for us at all. Because there's billions of people who want a flat screen TV and a walk in fridge. And who are we to tell them that they can't have it? And that's a direct question to you, Alex. I was scared it was yes. a direct question to me, and I put my mic up and went, I don't want to talk, and put it down again. No, I thought she was...
poised to give uh, you know the answer. I agree. Yeah, I thought that you were. I thought you were poised. <laughs> Did you tell me I was yeah, going to go? Yeah, which is why I said. Oh, well, you stopped. But I, I, was, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I am right in every respect. You're right on that one for sure. With uh, every, everything. What do you mean on that one? Well, yeah, I'm still in dispute on the Kylie Madonna. <laughs> If you disagree with me about anything, all it means is that you're wrong, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Nope. But seriously, Simon Cowell has got to do something to tone down those teeth because it was blinding. I couldn't see anything else that was on the screen at the time. He's a frightening man. The well, trousers, he, it's far too high. Well, yeah, I, I think he's trying to hide the, his gigantic gut. If only he'd wear a jacket, we wouldn't be able to see his, his enormous wobbly man boobs. He Roots. thinks that he's got pecs. He's actually just got giant that boobs. Exact, that is exactly it. Yeah. He, he looks in the mirror, and he can only see himself in two dimensions. <laughs> if only he could <laughs> see himself in three, like the rest of us can. Oh, well, and it's probably a good idea that his teeth are blinding us. No one is ever safe on this hostile planet! Jordan has her own perfume. Oh, truth. Now kids are going to be uh, leaving school. Not only do they want to be famous, but want to have their own perfume. And oh, what it? Oh, the great smell of Jordan. It's a brilliant money-making thing, though, isn't it? I can't believe that people would actually walk into a shop and ask for that. But, but they do. They ask for David Beckham's perfume and, um... Sarah Jessica Parker, as I saw advertised on the TV the other day. And She's got two now. Oh. God. One of them's called Chance. <laughs> Chance? I think so, yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, one, one of them should be called Laugh, as in She's Avena. Kylie's got one as well. Oh, think. undoubtedly, yeah. It's called um, Sweet Darling or something. Hers yeah. is actually particularly good. Right, does it come in a bottle that's shaped uh, like, like her, a her bottle? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in a pair of gold pants. Three gold pants and everything. <laughs> Coco Chanel must be revolving in her grave. <laughs> Look what you started. It's probably a very well-appointed casket. In fact, she's probably got a suite. Yeah. <laughs> With Camille... Cam what were the flowers? Camillas? Hey! You are. <laughs> what were what flowers? Uh, Coco Chanel, her symbol is a flower, and I think it's a camellia. Right, well, I don't know nothing about that. No, right. That's... Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but go ahead. Well, uh, I, I, just, it, I reckon that her casket will be packed to the brim with camellias. It'll probably be packed to the brim with dust, I would think. No. No. It's all going. To, it's going to come to us all eventually. Oh, I can't think about that. It's would like you rather be buried or burnt? Buried. <sighs> buried. Frozen. Yeah. No, actually, I'd like to be fired <laughs> off into space. Frozen. Frozen. Cry gently, frozen. Right. All and right. Then, and then my brain put into the body of a younger, more sprightly being. No, I definitely want to be fired off whole into space. Really? Yeah. Why space? Do you like space? I love space. Me? In space, <laughs> no one can hear you decompose. Exactly. <laughs> and there might be, uh, you know, there's the, always the chance I could get picked up by... And probed by an alien. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you think they, they're waiting up there for the dead body scar? Mm. You've just been waiting yeah, for a human body to, to inhabit. Yeah, with yeah. a giant pipe. You know what, well, they'll, they'll stick <laughs> that. <laughs> but the thing with burning, though, <laughs> which I think is probably a nicer thing than being buried, because then worms will eat your eyes. Oh, no, not if you have a really <laughs> good lead-sealed, uh, lead like, sarcophagus thing. Well, what? I think you've got to be uh, a ruler of Egypt. A, a ruler no, really, of, to get a sarcophagus. Yeah. Where, where are you uh, planning to die? Mesopotamia? <laughs> but uh, to get burnt, OK, when they give you ashes... Now, perhaps somebody's worked in a funeral parlour. We're, we're, we stand next to a funeral parlour, don't we? Yeah, mm. we do. When they give you your ashes, how do you know that that is actually the ashes of the person that you've just given to them? I don't mm. think it is. Uh, and if it is mostly their ashes, then surely some of it will be the uh, ashes of the person who was in before. Yeah. And, and a lot of most, of, most of it's the coffin, isn't it? 
Yeah. Well, because we don't go down to. But do they actually burn the coffin, or do they surreptitiously behind the curtains take you out of the <laughs> no. coffin and Would then you? resell the coffin? <gasps> <laughs> well, what a waste if they don't. Maybe they don't burn us at all. Maybe they just get the. Um, maybe they just like go to their fire and save all the ashes from winter. Or maybe they just don't burn you at all. Maybe they just stick you in uh, in the back of a truck and go put you in a landfill. <laughs> I uh, know it's a bit morbid, but when my dad was buried, I wanted to check <laughs> inside. To check see if it was actually yeah. him. Yeah, well, quite right. Because he was buried at sea. Really? Yeah. Um, and uh, and I thought, well, because it, uh, it was a very expensive kind of operation to, to arrange, and I thought, well, I wonder if they'd skimp on, you know... The weight. The weight <laughs> or whatever, and... Uh, yeah, it's not actually in there. I, I know it sounds terrible, but part of me did think that and wanted to check. When he was buried at sea, does that mean tipped into the sea? Yeah, it was on a lifeboat. It was quite funny, actually, because... Um, well, that's what you want from a funeral. <laughs> it's comedy. <laughs> it's, Human it's, humor. That's, that's, uh, that's the way he would have wanted it. Um, but the, the, like, the lifeboats, um, you know, pastor or whatever, he, he was... The, it, it was quite rough, so he was trying to read while this little lifeboat is tipping from side to side and he's trying <laughs> to fall over. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else is try, yeah, trying not to bath. I thought it was hilarious. Try, um, try dancing on his grave. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but actually, that's not such a bad idea, being buried at CS, but what was that? I made the mistake of bringing my phone into the That's studio. very unprofessional. I know. What? I'm going to have to turn it off. I think what it is is, uh, it's just... It's I don't just want your thing. excuses. No, I'm turning it off. I'm turning it off. We were talking about, um, dead people. I know, I know. It's so un disrespectful. Is that such a word? Yeah. Lack of respect. I normally said unrespectful. Undisrespectful. Undisrespectful. Yeah. You undisrespectful. No, me. but I wonder, the, I, I wonder uh, how rigorous they are with, um, giving the... Uh, the ashes, because presumably it's in some sort of oven, which is not very big, so that they can concentrate the flame. And so do they actually clean it out completely between people, or do they just give you any old ashes and you don't, and the ashes that you've got of your departed loved one are not necessarily, uh, have anything to do with them? I uh, know, is it, I mean, there must be some code There's got to be an overlap. For, for, um, for funeral directors and crematoriums, but... Stuff must get mixed up. Well, there's a code of practice for hospitals, and they're screwing up there all the time, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> Did you read about the guy who went in for, um, it's not funny at all, but he went in for an operation on his leg. I think, um, I can't remember exactly what the details were, but let's assume that it was, uh, he couldn't, uh, walk on one leg, because there was something that, uh, gammy with it. And so he actually wrote on his leg, this one, uh, with a big arrow, operate here. <laughs> And they still operated on the other leg. That's just, that's just a disgrace. Well, it's staggering, isn't it's it? It's just extraordinary. That yeah, and so if they're doing wrong. that in hospitals, then, I mean, funeral parlours, they must... I've never been to a funeral parlour. Does it just disappear behind a curtain or something? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what happens, yeah. How big is the curtain? <laughs> like, like, is it a theatrical... <laughs> yeah, you had to have an orchestra and everything. <laughs> a clown comes on first of all to warm up the audience. <laughs> some yeah. previews of some other funerals, and then Brucey comes on. <laughs> Here is uh, Forest Hill. Hello, Karen. Oh, hello. Um, I just thought at the beginning of the program you said it was Alex's birthday. Oh, You're happy birthday, about... Alex! <laughs> You're talking okay. about funerals. <laughs> yeah, you're quite right. Way to start the day. Awful. Anyway, happy birthday, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> what are you going to get? Nothing. Good. Just what you are. Just what you wanted. I should change the subject. It's a bit grim to start your yeah. birthday talking about stuff like that. Quite right. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was it. Yeah, that's it. That was great. Thanks a lot, Karen. <laughs> Bye. You've uh, you sorted us out just in time. We've got to get Alex a present. He can't not get a present. For Alex, his birthday. but you don't want anything, right? Yeah, that, that, oh, that's, that's right. Oh, come on. Okay, Someone well... You a set of golf clubs. You go, no, no, take those horrible birthday golf clubs away. I would, actually. I don't like golf. I'd, no, I'd <laughs> them on, I'll put them on eBay. I'd buy something nice. Well, you want nothing, and you'll... And that's exactly what you'll get. In abundance. Here is Waterford. Hello, Andy. Oh, good morning, mate. How are you? All right, thanks. Those um, ladies at, uh, and gentlemen at, at, at Heathrow, they're a bit like those ladies that used to be at Greenham Common, and they sitting there beside the fence knitting and that. Yeah, they they were right too, but there's nothing that they can do about it. 
No, so they just said they knit. Yeah. Um, the X Factor uh, and alleged um, talent shows, Nick, mm. um, I used that word talent and I was making that funny symbol with my first two fingers yeah. in the air. Waggling your fingers in the air, isn't that in the commas, yes. Yeah. Um, I get the impression for a start that, that when they're looking for a new presenter for, for one of those, some with, with wit and talent and skill, you probably won't be first in line for that, will you? Who me? No, not at all, no. No, it wouldn't be your gig, really, would it? No. Well, if but they want somebody think... with wit and talent, then they wouldn't be looking for me, no. Well, I, I also think, you know, it's, I don't think you'd, you'd lower yourself. Uh, well, I, you, you'd I... be surprised at how low I would go for the money. <laughs> I think, I think, um, I think what they need to do for the next... You see, it strikes me that, that every time one of these series finishes, Simon Kell needs to think up another version that's just a nuance different from the last one. Yeah. In order to make himself a load of money. That's right. So, like, how much money does that man actually need? Well, yeah, exactly. Is he not good enough? Um, so, I think I think a really good idea would be to have. I, I don't know what it's called yet, but you might be able to think of a title for me. But it'll be one in which they audition the next host of the next series. <laughs> yeah. so host you have, X. You could have yeah the XX. You could have lines of all these people queued up outside the, these theatres all over the country. And these are all the likes of uh, Lisa Rogers and all these plethora of, of blonde f- ladies. Blonde, bland bimbos, yeah, yes. And, you know, of, of all readers. sexes, yeah. Um, and, and, and they could come on, and they could be ridiculed by him, and then we could all ring in uh, and, uh, and, and bump up our phone bills to, to vote them in or out. Right, and if they get voted out, then they get their own afternoon chat show on ITV. Yeah, it, ex- That's exactly the point. Now, Nick, call me old-fashioned. You're old-fashioned. Right? I'm old-fashioned, but I remember, I think I remember, unless it was a dream, I remember when television shows used to be designed specifically to either educate or amuse or entertain. Uh, is that, am I right, or is that, <laughs> is that nonsense? Because... Well, these days they're just uh, money-making exercise. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing is it's designed cynical specifically to extract money from you. Yeah. And that's just so cynical. No wonder that guy's got such a big, white, sparkly smile. Mm. Because uh, despite the fact that we know we're being had, we still are lapping it up. I yeah. know we're like lemmings. Yes, exactly right. Yeah, like lemmings. I'm very disappointed that they that they came back so big. I'm, I, in, in, and I'm similarly pleased that Big Brother is a disaster this year. Yeah, yeah, that is so satisfying. Every now and again, you remember that they're still in there. They're still in there. Yeah, and in a few weeks' time, in probably another... How long more have they got in there? Probably another oh. two years. They'll come out, and everyone will say, well, who are you anyway? They'll, they'll come out uh, already blinking at the expected uh, flashbulbs, yeah. and uh, tumbleweeds will be blowing across outside. Sure, no yeah. one will be interested. Wouldn't that be great if no one showed up? Yeah, fantastic. Well, you'd have that shouty woman well, shouting about it. I what quite like that shouty woman. Do you? Oh, yeah. No. I mean, as, as far as TV presenters go, I think she's one of my favourite. I mean, TV presenters, if you just like uh, an I'll do anything TV presenter, yeah. then that almost by definition means that there's nothing to you. You're just surface. There's nothing behind the smile. Well, but I think there is something behind You're it. just a body with, with a, that you can read an auto cue, and that yeah, someone you else can, writes your script. Exactly. You can walk towards the camera and read the words that are printed on the camera screen yeah. uh, without uh, falling over or swearing. Yeah. And if without you do that, you're any intelligence whatsoever. None at all, no. Or talent, perish the thought. Yes, that's right, yeah. Well, p- uh, just bland general TV presenters, the, the, no talent is required because you don't actually have to think... Uh, for yourself, because you're just basically the puppet that the... Because the producer writes, and well, if he does the writing, but he's got the idea of how the show would go. But he's too old and ugly to actually present the show, so he just gets somebody who's a puppet of uh, whatever he has in mind. So they're, they're, they're not doing... The presenter's not doing their thing, they're just doing what they're told. They're ba- it's basically like um, a, a dog being told to roll over. <laughs> That's what they do. But there's so many of these people. There must be hundreds of these yeah. people. And they're yeah. going to be ever more, because the only thing that you hear that, uh, from uh, people uh, these days is that, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be famous. Oh, and that's ex- what, what for? Exactly oh, what nothing, anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's re- exactly. 
<laughs> they just want to, to get their photographs taken a lot, and they want yeah. to um, jump the queue in clubs. And, and then people ultimately to go out and buy their smell. Yes. I'll send you a bottle of my smell in the post, Andy, all right. Thank you so much. Watch for it at your door. Thanks a lot, mate. Ta-da. Uh, good night. This is LBC. The Volkswagen Fox from just 6,600. So they opened their big mouths and out came talk. Talk, talk. ITV's The X Factor returned for a fourth series on Saturday night with a record-breaking audience figure of almost... This is really painful to even read this. Almost 50% of the people that are watching TV at the time are watching The X Factor. Half the nation. Isn't that scary? It's really frightening. And the reason that they were watching is because of that whole... And brilliant. I mean, you have to really admire their... Uh, the success, this, the juggernaut of publicity that's behind this programme. Because if you can have enough publicity behind you, you will be a success. You can make a success of poop in a can if you've got enough publicity behind you. Absolutely. The X Factor had three times the audience of the uh, mess over on BBC One, Dance X. Well, at least that's good. Because Dance X, right down to the title of the thing... It's just a copy of uh, the Simon Cowell thing that's on the other side, which, let's face it, is no good way to spend our licence money, is it? I want to know how they can get away with it being so obviously a rip -off. No one has any idea how, how they can get away with spending our money on this well, yeah, tribe. Terrible. I mean, if ITV want to put it on, that's fine. We don't pay for ITV. Uh, the um, the big setup chronicled the drama that saw Louis Walsh fired, and I I am also waggling my fingers in the air to denote inverted commas fired from the judging panel earlier this year, only to be brought back shortly afterwards. Does anybody believe that? No. No, not really. No. Uh, but um, but the but the most uh, shocking thing about uh, the whole uh, Farago was that they were being so deeply unpleasant. I had to turn it off. I only got through. The first lady. I didn't see any anybody else. I just thought they're being so nasty to this, because if she was an out and out nutter, the first person who came to sing, and they were unpleasant and uh, you know everything that goes with that, then okay. But she wasn't. She seemed, you know, like a perfectly nice lady. And the fear... Because when they started laughing as she was singing, she wasn't going to stop singing because she was doing her audition, right? So she had to get to the end of it. And after they started laughing at her, you could see the concern in her eyes. And at that point, I wasn't enjoying it anymore. Plus, uh, Simon Cowell's teeth. I mean, not even the... You're obsessed with his well, teeth. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, you see white teeth on TV all the time, but he, um, I don't know, maybe he fell asleep in the dentist's chair and the bleach just uh, took him uh, ten shades too white. Is it the orange of his skin? Not even the compared? Plymouth Lighthouse is that bright. <laughs> Let's have uh, Newbury Park. Hello, Ian. Hiya. Ian. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I, I had to cringe a bit. I felt really sorry when they started laughing at that poor woman. Yeah. Oh, that was really rude really was. It was. There's, uh, there's no other way uh, to uh, to put it, yeah. Very you rude. Missed, you missed the woman with the dodgy teeth, then? Well, I, I, like I said, I haven't deleted it yet, so I might go and uh, take another peek. You, you've got to see the woman with the dodgy teeth. Uh, she does have a go. She is a nutcase, but she does have a go at Simon's teeth. Right. OK. <laughs> <laughs> there's something anyway. to look forward to. Um, crematoriums. OK. I've, um, I'm, I'm a DJ. Hey, DJ! How are you doing? Get down! And I also put in PA systems. And right. I've had a few jobs putting PA systems into crematoriums when they've got more than enough people that they can't cope. They have to put people outside. So I put sound systems outside. Right. So I've actually seen what goes on when the curtain shuts. Yes. And I'm going to spill the beans here. Um, they, the curtains close, and sometimes the coffin goes through, Sometimes it doesn't. It depends how many they've actually done that particular day. But then they stack them up, and they have they do have to burn them individually, and they do clean the ovens out before they put the next one in. Are you sure about that? Oh, I, I, had, I had long conversations with the guys that did it, and I was watching them do it all. And some, it depends, also depends what oven you've got, whether it's gas or electric, funnily enough, and how quick they actually burn the body. What, uh, half an hour at gas mark six? <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, no, it's about... About three to four hours. 
Really? Well, yeah, it has to get through the, 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 the wood on the coffin, then it has to get through the body and all the bones, right. and literally everything disintegrates. Huh. And everything's in there with the ashes. In fact, some places you can actually stand and watch it. You can actually stand and watch the body burn. Some religions, if they have uh, cremation, they have to watch the body burn. Right. So, yes, they, they do burn the bodies. They don't take them out of the coffins. They, have, they do it all in, it just tro- off a trolley straight into the oven and it's done. But I have heard that they do stack them up if they, if, for, um, in, well, they say environmental reasons, they only fire up the ovens when they've got a lot to do, right? They yeah. don't fire them up for just one person. No, they, they, they stack them up and they, they do them uh, once they've got enough to do for the day. They'll, they'll do That's why people don't get the ashes like, a few hours afterwards. Right. But it was very interesting to, to watch and see. The funny thing was, the first time I did it, I was actually behind the curtain with a mixer. And when the curtains started drawing, I felt so stupid because I was behind the curtain and the coffin was going. There's these people crying and I'm trying not to giggle because I felt silly. You know when you get a nervous laugh going? Yes. It was very, it, it, was, it was a weird feeling, but you get used to it after a while. Well, you might have been joining him in the oven. Oh, no. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> well, it would have been one less DJ in the world and I don't mean that to be offensive, Ian. Oh, thank you very much. All thank right. You. OK, thanks a lot, mate. Speaking to you, Nick. God bless. Cheers. Ta-ra. Bye. Uh, here's an, uh, another story about death. Sorry. Hello, Paul. Hello, yeah. Nick. Paul. Hi. How are you? I just wanted to uh, add about the uh, cremations. Yeah, uh, I went to one two weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, you can actually witness um, the coffin being burnt. Not throughout, but just the initial stages. Right. Uh, this was an Asian cremation, and the head of the family has to witness it. I think I'd like that. Well, that's what they say. It's a, it's a, it's a way of actually saying that they, you know, they have said goodbye to them, and and obviously witnessing that they have seen the ceremony through. I went to my granddad's uh, funeral, and um, we all got stuck in a giant traffic jam going to it because mm. uh, there was the church service, and then we went to uh, see the, the the body actually go through the curtains. Right. And um, the people who were on after us were standing around outside in the rain because we were late. Yeah. And we all, uh, f- we were, uh, like I said, held up from some massive traffic jam. And so we all went in and we sat down and the, uh, the a priest came out and he literally said, well, we're, we're running very late, so um, we're going to have to go. Yeah. And that was it. And the yeah. body disappeared behind the curtain and um, you just didn't feel, uh, you felt a bit cheated. You felt like you wanted your granddad to come back alive. So they could do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a five fifteen slot, and we had a horse and carriage um, uh, take the coffin there, and uh, so we, were, we had we had to watch the clock. But the the thing I didn't know was that I was told later was your ashes uh, the the cremation doesn't actually uh, send you to full ashes. They have to actually put your bones into a machine afterwards and crush them. Well, I didn't want to know that. <laughs> I didn't know that at all. I just, I just, it was a surprise to me as well. But apparently, it doesn't complete it. You know, they have to finish it off into powder. Well, and then they stick you in a blender and. Well, no, they put you in a two kilo plastic box presented to the family afterwards. You know, with the certificate to say that they are officially human remains. Officially dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's something I didn't know. That was, yeah. Well, I didn't know that either, and I wished I'd remained ignorant. So, <laughs> so they put you in a giant crusher. Suddenly that whole um, crematorium thing is beginning to sound a lot less fun. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, at, the, least, I, at, least, at least the uh, insects won't get you. Yeah, you're, well, you're right about that, yeah. be put under a nice tree you can plant for them. I think I'm going to rethink this whole dying thing. I think I'm going to postpone that for the time being. Yeah. Me too, yeah. That has to be uh, thought through much more carefully. All right, thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks, bye. Cheers, ta So, uh, you still want to get um, shot in the space, Alex, or would you like to be crushed? We could um, crush you and your giant uh, road-going I, chrome I, I, boat at the same time. Friends have joked that I would be buried in that, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind being buried in it. Um, no, I, I, I like the space idea still. The whole thing just makes me feel dizzy with horror of misery and 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 squishness. S- squishness. Yeah, it's yeah, it's official term, medical term. 
What? The, just the dying thing <sighs> or being crushed? No, no, the dying thing. It's a horrible precipice of thinking that I prefer not to go down. But, um, but so Frozen is, is my option still. I'm sticking to Frozen. I know it's not necessarily out there. But Frozen, all you'll do is disintegrate very slowly. But don't they honour... Uh, there are people who are really, really rich who have opted for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all think they're mad, but... Yes, they are. But they might have the last laugh in about no, 20 won't. years' time. Literally, they might laugh within somebody else's body. Yeah, uh, how likely do we think that is? Freezing the brain and then unfreezing it without ruining it in the process. I know. They freeze babies, though. They I freeze mean, you embryos. Can't, you can't even freeze tomatoes <laughs> without ruining them <laughs> on defreezing, can you? Not even a strawberry a can point. survive that. And, or a raspberry. That yeah. is a fair point. Blueberries, though, they can survive freezing. So the, uh... <laughs> So the sensible thing would be to die and come back as a blueberry. Giant, yeah. Yeah. Giant blueberry. And only then can you be frozen. Well, they say that they are the super healthy fruits. Well, this week they do. Last week it was uh, bilberries, and the previous week it was blackberries, and the week before that it was, uh, yeah, it's really hard to keep up. It is hard. Are there these, those goji berries as well, which taste revolting. Oh, do they? I couldn't afford them, so uh, oh, they, they, I'm glad to hear it. No, don't go there. They're no. disgusting. <laughs> well, anything that does you good is uh, is disgusting. Like cough syrup, for instance. I'm on, about, I'm on about three pints of cough syrup a day now, man. This. We're running light! I don't want to talk about this all night, or in fact, uh, uh, at all. I don't want to take any calls about it, but uh, this guy who killed Philip Lawrence, that has really been peeing me off today. You know what, if you do something that bad, then th the bad news is you don't have any human rights anymore. If you don't act like a human, then you don't have any human rights anymore. You kill somebody in, uh, in that manner, how can, you, how can they sit there and say with a straight face that it would be an abuse of your human rights to send you to Italy when you get released? But more than that, what's this talk of release? What does life mean if it doesn't mean life? It just means, what, a long weekend, a short uh, slap on the back of the wrist, and we'll ask you politely if you wouldn't mind not doing it again. This country is committing societal suicide. I've said it before, and I'm absolutely right ab about this. And this is another way that they're lying to us. They're, they're lying to us about the law. If somebody gets uh, ten years, they don't mean ten years, they mean five. So why don't they say five? The reason that they don't say five is that ten sounds more. So they're lying to us. They're trying to make it seem like they're actually doing something, but they're not. Life doesn't mean life. It means whatever they happen to think of. It's just, I mean, I'm just staggered by this. Are you? I actually don't agree. Um, isn't that awful? I, I don't agree because this the the lad that killed um, Mr. Lawrence was was fifteen. Yeah. So. Well, the question is whether or not when you're fifteen as yes, a kid you, you should be. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Yes. At fifteen. At fourteen. At thirteen. Really? At twelve. Yes. No question about it. But what it. about the the prospect? Well, like so he, well, he didn't know that it was a bad thing to kill someone at but fifteen there's no years old. Prospect of rehabilitation. I don't care. Do you think people are are, are born bad or made bad? People have to take responsibility for their own actions, and that's one of the big problems in this society, is nobody takes any responsibility for their own actions anymore. Oh, it wasn't me that did it, it was because I was just in Marilyn Manson, or because I was drunk, or because I've been smoking marijuana, or I was made to do it because of my friends, they're all going around in gangs, and... No, it wasn't, it was you who did it. Uh, knives don't kill people, people kill people. That's true, but I, I don't know. I just, I think, I think he, I think maybe it's a bit too soon, but I think somebody can be rehabilitated. Or I hope they can. It's, it's horrible thoughts. All right, well, they can be re rehabilitated as much as they like while staying in prison. They'll be a better person in prison. I don't care how they, uh, I think this is insane. This is an insane <laughs> conversation that we're even thinking about letting him out. The guy he killed is still dead. Here's uh, Rygate. Hello, Tim. Uh, hello, Tim. Tim. Um, yeah, I was just about to say, um, me and my friends have actually started listening to your radio station recently, uh, yours and Ian's uh, show, and we've sort of developed a, a cult following to it. Um, I just thought I'd bring up tonight on a happier note rather than death and kiddies stabbing teachers and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, to okay, let you know, the that last a, word about there, that. There, yeah, there's a, there's a type of hedgehog in Africa that can run as fast as a horse. No, there isn't. There is. 
Is this a setup for a joke? No, no, seriously, there, honestly, there is a type of hedgehog in Africa. This is where Sonic the Hedgehog came from, except, obviously, without red trainers and blue quills. Uh, but seriously, there's a, there's a hedgehog in Africa that can run as fast as a horse. A dead horse? No, no, a real, live, running horse. <laughs> and where did you get this information? Um, do you know what? I actually got it from an old biology teacher of mine. <laughs> was he but, uh, really drunk at the time? No, no, no. He was a really intelligent man, actually. Really what's intelligent what's man. the name of this hedgehog? I, I don't know. I'll, I'll Google yeah. it later on. I'll email the show. I'll email the you guys at, uh, at ninety-seven point three. But the um, the uh, it's it's seriously. There's there's a type of hedgehog. I mean, I, the other thing is that normal, you know, average British hedgehogs um, can climb up to eight feet uh, up the like, trees and things like that. And the only way they can come down is actually by rolling into balls and falling out of the tree or falling off whatever they've climbed up. OK, hands up in there who's believing this. Hands up <laughs> who's not believing it. <laughs> well, well it's, it's, half, it's half 12. Why would I ring in and say that? But it's, I just thought it was a really interesting fact, actually. I'm not, I'm not, don't worry, I'm not like a, I'm not perverse in, in, in hedgehogs or anything like that, but I, it was, I just thought it was quite well, an interesting... I'll be uh, the judge of that. <laughs> well, all right, well, I'll look it up as soon as I get home, all right. Se seriously, Google it. It's, it's quite interesting. Hedgehogs yeah. are, are, and also, they're in the pig family as well. Are they? Seriously, hedgehog. I bet they're yummy. I bet they are as well. Plus, they've got their own toothpicks, so... <laughs> Let's tuck <laughs> in, eh? True, true, kebabs. Yeah. All good. All right, thanks anyway, a lot, have Tim. Have guys, Cheers, all right? Cheers, mate. Ta-ta. Enjoy the show. I'm bye, gonna, bye. Uh, I'm going to look that up as soon as I get home. Google it, he said, without mentioning any brand names. I believe the bit about getting up the tree. Yeah, me too. How out. can a What's hedgehog eight climb eight? a tree? Because they, they got sharp little claws on there. Little, Maybe little they mean legs. an echidna. You know, they've got quite vicious claws. what now? Echidna, they're Australian-type hedgehog creatures, but with much longer spines that do look more sort of Sonic-esque. I've got no idea what a Sonic the Hedgehog is. What is that? Oh, it's a, a car, like a, um, a computer game character, a bit like Super Mario, but a hedgehog, and he's blue. Isn't he Super Mario a plumber? Uh, yes, he hey, is. Hey, I can't believe I know something about those things. He is a plumber. You're quite right. He's got a brother as well called Luigi, who I don't know he's what He's a pizza he maker. Is he <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> he probably is a pizza maker. <laughs> but yes, echidnas are, are Australian hedgehogs. Right. Yeah. It's almost like an education, this show, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Here is, uh, Derbyshire. Hello, Alan. Good evening, Mr. Alvin. Alan. Hello. How are you? Oh, yeah, fine, thank you, until I actually saw what was on Wednesday night. What's on Wednesday um, night? Well, I know you're one for recording TV and you've already fancy technology and that. Yeah. And I don't believe you didn't know what Sonic the Hedgehog was. A bit shocked by that. But anyway, to my point, Anne Whittaker sorting out the unemployed. Really? It's, it's like having a rock... It might, you might as well send a Rottweiler into the job centre. Yeah, a blonde, fat, two-legged Rottweiler, yeah. A bit scary. She stands with her legs so far apart, they're almost in different postcodes. Right. I think you're in danger of being sued here, Nick. No, she does. Uh, she's, she has a giant wide skirt, and her legs, it's, it's almost as though they don't meet at the top. They're, they go up parallel. Because mo most people's legs, when they stand with their feet wide apart, they, um, th they, they're not parallel lines, their legs. But hers, it's, it's almost, she, she's almost like some sort of, like someone's drawn her. It's like a cartoon of a woman. Well, it was, oh, I definitely think there'll be some cartoon violence on Wednesday. It did look rather scary, the trailer I saw. She was just saying, telling a guy to get back to work, and she looked, she looked like she was snarling at him. Well, he was probably snarling right back. She's lucky to be alive. Well, considering you're one of the most hardest working people in showbiz, I thought you should watch this. Yeah, me. Yeah, your taxpayers' money's been spent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. I'll look forward to that. Anyway, happy birthday on Wednesday. Yes, thanks a lot, mate. Big five though, is it? <laughs> Nearer that than thirty. <laughs> Take care, Nick. Thanks a lot, Bye -bye. Alan. And that's a really scary. It's, it's a it's a thought that I can't really get my head around. Every time I hear my age, I don't th think that it has anything to do with me, because in my mind, I'm still like I'm not even used to thirty yet, let alone forty, and that I'm going to be forty-seven is well, just weird. I bet you still feel. Yes, I 18. do, yeah, on a constant basis, yeah, night and day. Pardon? <laughs> With both hands, in a, a lot of times. I feel, I feel like a teenager still, most of the yeah, time. Yeah, well, who doesn't? But where are you going to find one around here? Oh, ho, ho! Ilford, hello, Nick. Hello there, Nick. How you uh, doing? All right, mate. Good stuff. Um, 
I know video games is obviously not your favourite topic, but as you just cared to mention it, I thought I'd throw in with another little kind of computer-related fact. Um, you mentioned that you knew about the character of Super Mario. Uh, well, I didn't. I mean, I've heard the name. Well, but, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, then you talked about, oh, sorry, Alex talks about uh, the character of Luigi being his brother and everything like that. Right. Um, the interesting fact I've got about the game is that the game is called, or the original game at least, was called Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. And uh, I never thought about it when I was a kid, growing up and that, but later on I thought to myself, hang on, if it's called Super Mario Brothers, surely that would mean that the family name is actually Mario, which would make the main character Mario Mario. <laughs> and it's actually... It's actually um, Unless his brother was out. also called Mario that's as right. a first name. Yeah. And that's actually come out as an actual fact. I think it was more of a cock-up in the translation, um, because obviously it's a Japanese game. Um, and I think it was a, a kind of um, transatlantic mistake um, that that actually came about. But it's actually now uh, kind of gospel. Right. So that's actually the fact. And also, in the same time, um, I don't know if you ever remember a game called Donkey Kong. Well, again, I've heard of it, but I don't really yeah. know what it is. Oh, it, it, it's another game actually starring Mario, funny enough. And... Um, that originally was called Monkey Kong. But when the facts were sent over, there was a kind of blur on the writing, and so it was called Donkey Kong. And was there a donkey in it? No, it was a monkey. Right. It was a giant monkey. That's why it never really made any sense. It was many years later when somebody admitted there'd been an, like a technical error or a glitch, and the name was changed to Donkey Kong instead of Monkey Kong. Well, there's just something about the name Donkey Kong. I quite like that. Oh, I think it, I think... think you, know, you know what it rhymes with, of course. Huh? It, it, it's a lot more memorable. Yeah, exactly, because it's, it's all... Oh, never mind, I won't go down that track. <laughs> <laughs> George is shaking her head with relief, no, I no, think. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. OK, um, thanks for the good news, Nick. No problem, bless Cheers, you. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Um, he sounds like one of those chaps who would go to a Trekkie convention and ask um, uh, Le Leonard Nimoy... In episode 14, you specifically stated that you had just beamed down from the planet. However, that uh, hadn't been uh, invented yet, and, you know, look on and on and on like that. But no, he was absolutely right in everything he said, whatever the hell he was talking about. No one has any idea. Here's one in, um, Uxbridge. Oh, Simon. Good morning, Nick. Simon. How you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Good. Uh, I was ringing about the, um... About the crematoriums? Yeah. I worked in a crematorium for four years, and there's an awful lot of myths about it, but what actually happens, unless the family uh, requests to see the, see the cremation, what actually happens, we take the, or we used to take, I used to take the uh, bodies out of the coffin, all the clothes would be stripped off it and the shoes, and the body would go into, into one furnace, and the coffin and the clothes would go into another. Why? Because, um, one, the, the urn you get, or the plastic container you get, containing the ashes, is actually the body rather than the coffin. I mean, if you imagine how much ash you'd get, you get from the coffin, right. it's an enormous amount of ash, and you don't get that. because, And also, plastic and metals, which are used in the, in the coffin, on the handles and the clasps, etc., play havoc with the ash, because what they do, they melt into a molten lump, at the bottom of the, out on the tray at the bottom of the furnace, and all the ash then uh, moulds in with that. Don't they just reuse the coffin? Why would they burn it? <laughs> no, they can't do that. Why not? I mean, they're not going to catch a disease from it, are they? It's unethical, isn't it? Someone's paid well, for that coffin. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, I mean, that's, uh, that's just the way of the world, isn't it? I mean, if you can <laughs> screw a, a, a bigger profit by not doing the right thing, then people will do that, surely. I tell you, what's, what has happened in the past, which is uh, a bit naughty, but it does happen, is if a person's got, say, a plastic hip or metal in their, metal in their body when they're burnt, yeah. that then causes the problem I mentioned, same with a coffin, you know, with, the, with the metal or the plastic on the coffin, and sometimes ash can be mixed. It, um, if you've got, say, three or four burnings, ash can be taken out of another one and mixed in with it to just make up the amount. Because of because a lot of it's stuck to the plastic or the metal, you know, um, um, gone hard with it. So you you basically have a cocktail of different people. <laughs> 
Yeah, but it very rarely happens. And the trays, when I used to work there, <clears throat> the trays were jet washed off, and now they've got proper cleaning machines like that you slide the tray into, and it cleans the tray afterwards. So that if long as long as there's no problems with the burning, uh, you always get your your partner's ashes or your or your loved one's ashes. So you having worked in the business, how do you want to be uh, buried or burnt? Um, definitely going to be cremated. Right. And I'm, and I'm going to ask for someone to watch, and I'm going to make sure the inside of my coffin's still lined. Right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Simon. There's something to look forward to, eh? <laughs> Cheers, mate. Right. Uh, how on earth did we get into this depressing topic? It's all your fault, Georgia. Why was it uh, my fault? I, I wanted to be frozen. <laughs> I hope that you're taking full responsibility. Oh, I love this. I just love the fact that the plastic moulds at the bottom. <laughs> uh, Carol, we are doing uh, St Albans. Oh, Ricky! Hey, Ricky. Good evening, Mr Abbott. How you going? Not bad, yourself? Yes, super. Thanks for asking. Good. Um, I can confirm a lot of what's been said about the crematorium business because I used to have to go around and collect the ashes, well, not the ashes, the urns that the ashes were in, and deliver them to other undertakers and to some crematoriums where they would be scattered. And do the ashes um, often fill the urn? Um, I don't know. I never had the pleasure of one breaking open to find out. Because if, if someone was gigantically fat, for instance, would, they, uh, would the ashes overspill? Would they give you, like, a, a doggy bag along with the urn? <laughs> no, I never had that, so uh, I can't answer that one truthfully either. Right. But uh, the thing was, the company I worked for had a very strict rules about parcels and uh, the way they were handled. And we weren't allowed to carry passengers which was another one of their rules, for obvious reasons. You weren't allowed to carry passengers in a hearse? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No, no. Parcels. The urns were all wrapped up in boxes and sealed, yeah? Yeah. And we weren't allowed to carry passengers, and we weren't allowed to put parcels in the uh, driver's compartment either. But one day I was so stacked out with parcels that I had to... Uh, parcels, dead people's ashes? Yeah. Yeah. I had to put them in the cab. And I, I got uh, caught by one of the company inspectors who was doing um, a spot check. And he said, what have you got in the cab? I said, well, um, 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 um. he said, let me have a look. So he said, they're urns, aren't they? The ashes in. I said, yes, but I said, look, they're not going to tell anybody if you won't. Oh, a bit of, uh, a bit of death humour. <laughs> On the flight side. Yes. Urns, were they? What? Yes. Morecambe was following close by, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Ricky. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Ta-ra. Suddenly, every call we've got is about death. And uh, it's all your fault, Alex. Oh. I expect. Yeah, ha happy birthday to me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So what are you going to do on your birthday? Uh, I don't know, yeah. What are you going to get? Nothing. Oh, you probably. must get something. No, my family are, are useless. You go out and buy yourself something. What do you want to buy yourself? If you could buy yourself anything, what would you get? <sighs> I've, or I've already bought it, I think. That's the what? trouble. But like an iPod or something? My, my giant car. Oh, your boat. car. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It would just be more bits for my car, well, basically. Well, then go and buy yourself some, like, car bits. Like, can't, chrome can't, things. Can't afford it. Like a sort of leather steering I, wheel or something, whatever boys buy. You could take, uh, you could buy one of those, um, sun strips. You could put your <gasps> name on it. <laughs> yeah. Daz and Trace <laughs> or something, maybe. Yeah, just invent, or maybe go and buy yourself a pet. Furry dice would be good. Mmm. Or one of those Ooh. nice, um, Christmas tree yes. uh, car fresheners. Or a traffic lights one for a real treat. Well, how about those, uh, knobbly nodule seat covers that <laughs> cab drivers use. You know why they Do have they those? they still sell those? Oh, no, so, no, no, there's a good reason for why they have them. I, it, it means, we know it's hot weather, it means you don't get a sweaty back. Yeah, that's right. I'd learnt that from when I used, used to do a lot of driving, and, uh, yeah, they'd be very useful. Not that girls sweat, we, uh, glow. Horses sweat. Yeah, glowing like a pig you are. <laughs> <laughs> Here is, um... <laughs> Uh, oh, God, it's all about death now, and it's all my fault. Croydon. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Matthew. Almost. Happy birthday to Alex. Yeah, happy birthday to you. <laughs> 
Yes, um, continuing on from death, it is, uh, again, I wouldn't say it's a fascinating subject, but I am an ex-funeral director, and part of, obviously, my training at, for the funeral director's diploma was actually to see behind the scenes and to see what happens uh, after, with, obviously, with the cremation, because we used to get, like, get nurses and doctors come in and we used to do presentations to them on death and they sort of like be asking questions of what happened after you know and it's, a lot of people ask these questions what happens and you know afterwards and it that is the all important thing behind the scenes that the families don't see i mean one of the last callers he said that the bodies that were removed out of the coffins and i can tell you now it is an absolute load of bilge because that actually breaches all the health and safety regulations under the sun. Well, so it all gets burnt at once? Yes, right. all does, yeah. But they take them out of the coffin and resell the coffin, right? Not at all. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Not at all, because if you, as I said, it would breach all the health and safety regulations under the sun. Right. If you can imagine that if somebody had passed away of hepatitis or AIDS, there's no way that that coffin could be rehandled by any of the crematorium staff. I'm surprised that they haven't outlawed dying, because it... it uh, in itself contravenes health and safety regulations. It's very dangerous, dying. It is, it is, yeah. It is, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately we're surrounded by it all the time. It's a part of life that we've got to accept and it's the only sure thing in life. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, anything, anything, if you get any ideas about bodies being taken out of coffins and coffins being reused, because as I said, it just breaches health and safety regulations. And if, like, the environmental agencies from the, the local councils hear about it, I think there'd be some serious investigations. <laughs> yeah. But it, do it doesn't happen. And, again, it it's like anything, you know, what people don't understand, they tend to make up. Right. It's like everything. All but, right. Thanks okay. a lot, Matthew. You're welcome. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. You right. always want to carry some cones around. Uh, if you ever feel like you're about to die, you want to put some cones around yourself and slip on one of those uh, luminous jackets for health and safety reasons. Insert track property education. Words, words, more words. Ealing. Hello, Peter. Oh, hello, Rick. How are you doing? All right, thanks. I want to talk about a certain communications company. First initial is B. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Carry on. And the problems that I've incurred with them. Um, I, my mobile phone broke, and um, my alarm clock, which I bought from a one-pound shop, didn't work. So I yeah, thought I oh, really? Really? You, you bought a piece of modern technology from <laughs> uh, a pound shop, and it didn't work? Incredible. I know, I know. But anyway, I rang BT, and basically I thought I'd get them to wake me up in the morning. Did you say BT? Yes, I did. Previously I, having I, said I, it begins I with B. That, well, we can't go any further then, Peter. <laughs> You've screwed it up, mate. OK, I apologise. All right. Anyway, if you book an alarm call, they will charge you £6. How much? £6. £6? I almost fell off my chair. I find that hard. No. If you ring BT right now, they will charge you £6 for someone to ring you in the morning and tell you... What time it is. What time it is, basically, and time to get up. £6, guaranteed. It's 12.54, Peter. I want you to send me a cheque in the post, all right? <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. Okay, all right. <laughs> Ta-da. Uh, how about Mayfair? Alan. Hi, Nick. Alan. Hi, Nick. Somebody's got a morbid fear of dying. This show has been fantastic tonight. <laughs> That's... I'm not going to be out of sleep tonight. I'm going to have a few drinks when I get home just to get me off. Yeah, you and, uh, you and Carol both. Booze. Yeah. Nick. Nick. Yes. Did you hear the one where Spike Milligan wrote that he wanted to be buried in a washing machine? Go on. So when archaeologists dug him up in years to come, they, the man would have drowned in a washing machine. So if archaeologists dug, dug him up... Dug up the washing machine and found the body inside it, they yeah. thought the person would have drowned inside the washing machine. Right. That's where Spike wanted to be buried. Um, Spike, uh, <laughs> I think he's got it written on his tombstone, the thing that he always uh, wanted, wasn't it? And I, th I think it says... Uh, I told you I was ill. Yeah, yeah that's the one. I've, I've got that on mine as well. Right. Well, uh, you should uh, speed toward it, towards it as soon as you can. All right. Oh, he's gone. He actually died during the course of that call. It's a dream come true. Here is uh, Chigwell. Oh, Leslie. Hi, Nick. Leslie. Thank you. I've thoroughly enjoyed it this evening. Um, unfortunately, carrying on about uh, death. Death, yes. 
We've actually got um, a really big cemetery and crematorium in, in uh, East London that apparently is, is one of the, the best in the world, and they actually hold open days. One of the best in the world? Yeah, people come. Um, I mean, I, I know for a fact they actually get people from America. They hardly ever burn someone who's still alive. Yeah, it's <laughs> so they say. almost 100% record. Yeah, but uh, I, I did find that a bit amazing. But also when Alex earlier was saying about he wanted to be... Um, shot into space when he died. Mm. I've actually um, found somewhere that you can... Well, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about it. I'm going to be cremated anyway, but you can actually have your ashes put into a firework. Didn't um, uh, one of my favourite writers, what's his name, the uh, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Hunter S. Thompson, he had his um, ashes put into a cannon oh. and um, shot out of his uh, ranch in... Uh, uh, he's near that posh ski resort, wasn't it? Not Akron. That's not very posh at all. What's it called? Aspen. Aspen, yeah. Yeah, he uh, got himself shot out of a cannon. How'd yeah. you fancy that, Alex? It's not quite far enough, is no, it? No, no, just... <laughs> you've kind of come back to earth on yeah, that one. that's right. Yeah, I just thought bits. the firework was nice. Yeah, go out with a poof. Go out with a bang, why not? Quite, yes. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Leslie. Thank you. Now, what have we discussed on this show so far? Death? A lot of death. Horror. X Factor. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's Hedgehogs. The one bright light in this show. <laughs> Simon Cowell's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to tone them down or wear some sort of mark. He would look good in a burqa. Oh, wouldn't he? You'd never know about the, the moobs. <laughs> I, if, this occurred to me the other night, and it's not apropos of nothing at all, but I, I thought, you know, they often are doing um, different versions of the smiley face. And the one thing that I have never seen is the smiley face in a burka. I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> well, with just the yellow <laughs> in, the, in the small You'd just cap. see the eyes, and then mm. it could be like a veil, because sometimes they're slightly see-through, right? And then you could just pick out the smile underneath, and it would be a smiley face in a burka. I would wear a T-shirt that's got that on it. Wouldn't you? <laughs> wouldn't that be great? <laughs> sort of odd perversion of acid. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's go metal! I think that would be hilarious. I think that would be a top seller. If we go into uh, this business, by this time next year, we'll be millionaires. What do you say, kids? Let's go. T-shirt manufacturing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm on. I'm going to trademark it. Some chance, right? Yeah. I but it just occurred to me, and I, I uh, chuckled to myself. Laughed out loud, I did. Well, you can make, uh, you know range of greeting cards as well or something yeah that's key rings I, I always think that that would be something quite easy to get into like greeting cards with silly things that people haven't thought of yet well it's uh -huh. a yeah it's a no it's a whole business all you have to do is come up with a day that no one has thought of yet like um funeral day yeah your crematorium day happy happy funeral Fire it up. day mm. <laughs> hope it all goes well <laughs> pop up coffin <laughs> with the axe of death. Hope you're still dead when they do it. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, good grief. What, who's next, by the way? Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is next. Excellent. I'm here tomorrow night at 10. And don't forget that if you missed a single second of this show, then catch it on allthews.lbc.co.uk slash... Um, <laughs> Whatever it is. Okie dokie. On 97.3 DAB. 